You're watching Fox Sports, home to Major League Baseball, the Big Ten Championship, NASCAR, the UEFA Champions League Final, the UFC, and the NFL. The world's biggest events are on Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports! Don't let the rolling hills and serene setting fool you. Today will be loud, challenging, and intense. Every inch of the track, so important. And variety in NASCAR has been the choice so far with Toyota, Ford, and Chevy, each in victory lane. Whose turn is it today? It's the fourth race of the season, and we welcome you to NASCAR on Fox, the pre-race show. Today, Bristol, Tennessee, the place for what will be the most compact collection of cars you've ever seen. And for these drivers, it could be NASCAR's version of heavy metal. Our remote studio on the scene to bring you closer to the drivers and the action. It'll rain this morning, a chance for rain later today, but we're ready to race. And rock and roll. Happy St. Patrick's Day along with Hall of Famer Daryl Waltrip, Buck Chris Myers, Michael Waltrip along in uh, just a moment. And Daryl, you've won here 12 times, including seven in a row. Which driver exhibits the skill set that made you so successful here? You know, what makes you good here, Chris, is attitude. You ask any coach, they'll tell you, you give me a player with attitude over anything else, and he'll win me a lot of games. You got to have attitude, you got to pick your fights, and then you got to have time released aggression. You bottle it up. And then you let it loose when the time comes. 500 laps a lot for timed release aggression. Let's check out some of the storylines for today for Joe Gibbs Racing. An eventful week. Matt Kenseth won in Vegas. Denny Hamlin dropped his appeal, but funds will be deducted. Stewart Haas Racing starting in a hole. Tony Stewart currently at 18th place. And this week, Forbes magazine named Hendrick Motorsports NASCAR's most valuable franchise with four of the top 10 highest paid drivers. Dale Earnhardt Jr. at near 29 million, half of that coming through endorsements. But Joe Gibbs Racing uh, moved up to second on that list. Surprise you? You know why? Why? Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth came over to Gibbs. And if you notice, Gibbs leapfrog uh, Roush Fenway. And Matt Kenseth brought, uh, he brought sponsorship. And he brought uh, a winning attitude. He's a champion. And that really elevated uh, that whole uh, Joe Gibbs Racing team. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch looking up to him during winter testing. They were hanging on his every word about how to handle this new car. And speaking of Kyle Busch, he set a Bristol qualifying record here. Just under 130 miles per hour. So he starts on the pole today. And so far, three different style tracks, three different manufacturer wins. But today, the Gen 6 car gets its first taste of the short track. And the last Bristol race under the lights had the new reconfiguration. There were some fireworks from drivers afterwards. We always talk about that. They've been more under control, some of that timed release aggression <laughs> you're talking about. But let's talk about the Gen 6 car. We've already had more lead changes this year in the first three races compared to last year. But you've been saying on this track, you think it's a good fit. Yeah, well, I, I've always said there's, there's horses for courses. And the way this car is built, with the downforce it has, the big rear blade, the horsepower it has, the grip you get in this racetrack, this is a race I'd love to get out there and run some laps. This car is just so appealing to me, and I think we're going to see a great race today. This thing sticks like a spider monkey. It sticks to the track so tight. On a vital seat on a hot day. All right, there you go. Uh, let's check in with, uh, with Michael, who's roaming around. Oh, brother, where art thou? Man, guys, I'm hanging down here with the drivers at Driver Introduction. Let's talk to a few of them and see what's going on. Here's Jimmy Johnson, five-time champion driving a Gen 6 car, and you got your beautiful daughter with you. I do, buddy. Good to see you. I mean, you're almost buttoned up. You still have sneakers on, though. Well, I pulled it off pretty much, but uh, I'm a reporter, so I'm going to be on the move, getting the stories. And what's the story today? What do you think we're going to see? 
Um, good racing. I think it's going to be very, very good racing. But I can't get out of my mind how you tried to tear down the wall off of turn two years back. That, that, that was big. My brother has a grandstand named after him. I got a gate named after me. So, OK. Take it away. Ha have fun. Thank you. Me too. Uh, who can we find now? You're Tony Stewart. Hi, I'm Michael Walter, reporter. Um, how's it going? You're starting in the top 10. How do you feel about today? Uh, I'm excited about it. It's nice. I, I told Addington, I said, this is going to be the first time in a long time that I've actually watched the flagman drop the green flag. Normally, I'm in turn four or three still when they're dropping it. But uh, I think we're pretty decent. I mean, we we uh, had a little bit of work to do. And the biggest thing, I got a, I got a wounded crew chief today who's uh, sick with whatever bugs going around this week. So uh, he's down. But uh, we got a great team, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about our starting spot. Who's playing my ears? Um, it'd be your twin brother. Hey, Kyle, what's happening? You ready today? <laughs> I'm all good. How about you, Mikey? That was fun to watch yesterday. Great run. You were dominant, and you edged him at the end. That was fun for us uh, fans to watch. Well, I'm glad. You know, it's, uh, I certainly didn't want to make it seem that close, but uh, I'm glad that it was a good show at the end. You know, we had a lot of fun yesterday with the Monster Energy Camry, but on to today where I think the M&M's Camry is pretty good. So uh, Dave and the guys done a good job, and uh, we'll see what 500 laps has in store for us here at Bristol. This car is so fast. Are you worried physically that it'll wear you down with all the speed that you got? Hopefully it wears everybody else down. You can stay even with them. All right, thanks for your time. Who else could we find here? There goes Carl. Hey, Carl, how you doing? Find all the kids. Well, you can find all the kids in here. It's like kids intros nowadays instead of driver intros. I, I like what you're thinking. Hey, uh, you're pretty. Where are you starting? On the front row, of course. Oh, Chris, let's throw it back to you. I'm getting carried away down here. <laughs> you certainly are, Michael. Uh, drivers get to pick their own songs to be introduced to. There's Jimmy with Gimme Three Steps is uh, his song. He'll take that on a restart. We're counting it out of the start of the race here in Bristol, and here's what's ahead of you. Stay with us. Casey Kane's perspective on what he could have done differently to win last week. And then we're going to hear from the guy who got the checkered flag, Matt Kenseth, hoping for a victory here in Thunder Valley. And we'll take a look at the latest internet sensations, including Jeff Gordon's test drive, real or fake, we'll let you decide. All that and more as the NASCAR on Fox pre-race show rolls on. buddy you could get killed my wife's running for school board and there's a debate in an hour why didn't you say so guys we got a school board emergency my mom was a member of the school board <laughs> buckle up wait a minute i can win this thing just by driving sensibly oh nuts uh, or lug nuts. Casey Kane is not just a cartoon character on Cleveland, although you can see that tonight on Fox. He's also, as you know, a real-life driver who will start today's race on the front row. And you can also follow Kane in NASCAR The Game Inside Line. It's where you can relive all the best moments from the 2013 season and then download the Las Vegas content pack, and you can rewrite the finish of that race. And you know a Las Vegas rewrite is exactly what Kane has in mind. Casey Kane coming like yesterday's train. He is within two car lengths of the leader. The five just gets better and better. They able to chase down just about anybody he's had to. So five to go, I started getting a little bit closer to him. As we're catching these slap cars here, I know Matt was yelling on the radio to get him low. Get him out of the way, please. Get him down, down, down. I'm just hoping they stay high. I thought if he'd have to change up his line, I could get a run on him and at least get beside him. Kenson had to lift to choose a lane to get past Wise, and Kane is there. I drove into the corner a little too hard and gave up a little speed on exits. He got off the corner pretty good. Kenson playing down some fast laps. The biggest thing I felt like Matt did is he kept his momentum up. You're not going to just drive around, Matt Kenson. The two of us were just giving it all we had. These two guys here are putting on a show, buddy. He did everything right. And I did all that I could, and uh, wasn't able to get by him. Light the candles, happy birthday, Matt Kenseth. You know, if I could have got by him, I would have left him. NASCAR the game, inside line. It's so real life. It's like you're in there with the driver. You get to be the driver. And uh, Mac joining us here uh, after hey, rubbing elbows back, with the bro. drivers. Yeah. Michael, nice to have Good you job. back. Yeah, you saw Casey Kane down there a little bit earlier. What do you think about him today on the front row? I think he's hungry. You get that close to winning a race in NASCAR with the fastest car, you just can't get around that guy, leaves you wanting more. 
what I love is what he said. He said, I drove every lap as hard as I could go. And there at the end, I think he actually overdrove the corner a couple of times, but he was giving it all he had, and that's all you can do. 19th race in Bristol for Kane and second to his best finish so far. Fox Sports proud to team with Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks helping to feed more than 37 million people in America through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters each year. Visit feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports and learn how you can help fight hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox from Bristol, Tennessee. We have a lot more to come, including gas and go, and we'll hear from the driver from last week. Stay with us. NASCAR on Fox pre-race show, sponsored by Sprint. Millions of fans, one family, only Sprint can feed them all. Join the family at Sprint.com slash speed. In the new movie, Olympus Has Fallen, Gerard Butler plays a former Secret Service agent who works behind the scenes. Last week, Matt Kenseth's team worked behind the scenes to get him to victory lane. Help these guys get him out of the way. Get him down, down, down. See, he's got to even tell his spotter, here's what I need, man. Come on, help me. Get him out of the way. I got it, buddy. Bring it to the line here. Clear by three. Light the candles. Happy birthday, Matt Kemp. A job change at 40 can be unsettling, but uh, former NASCAR champ Matt Kenseth showed you how to do it. After 13 years in one place with Ford, he switched this season over to Toyota. And in his third race and on his 41st birthday, he hit the jackpot in Las Vegas. Today, he'll lean on his Bristol experience. Matt Kenseth looked really good. RPMs are in the air, driving close to the end. Happy birthday, Matt Kenseth. Kenseth make it two in a row. Matt Kenseth, you said it was important to get off to a quick start with your new teammates at Joe Gibbs Racing. You got the win. Can you back it up here, a place where you've had success? Well, I hope we can get a good run today. All the Joe Gibbs Racing Camrys have been, been really fast. Um, we seem to struggle a little bit on a longer run. So hopefully we made the right changes today for the, for the weather conditions. And, um, you know, hopefully we can be up front somewhere. Do you like Bristol? Is racing here a mindset? I do really like Bristol. I really like the, the whole start of the season. You go to five tracks that are really, really different before the first off, off weekend and uh, kind of get a, get a feel kind of where you're at and what you need to work on and that type of thing. So I'm uh, looking forward to going racing. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Matt and Steve. Uh, three times Matt Kenseth has won back-to-back -back races. A chance today. Yeah, it is. But you know what I liked about last week? He was playing offense and defense. I mean, that's hard to do at 200 miles an hour. What I loved, he was a man on a mission. He came out of the gate with Joe Gibbs Racing saying, I've got to win races. i got to put this team in victory lane. Didn't take him long to do it either. And he's got guys with him. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin want to follow his lead, a former NASCAR champion. Coming up as we count it out of the start of the race, uh, Jeff Gordon, like you've never seen him before. Is it real or is it fake? You'll get the judge first hand. <laughs> In Bristol, drivers have introduced the song of their choice since the summer of 2009. Kind of a cool thing here. The introduction of the exciting new Gen 6 car has led to plenty of chatter from traditional media as well as on social media. Chris Peasy has more. Hey, folks. Peasy here at the NASCAR and Fox offices, and I'm about to do what every American office worker does all day long. Check Facebook. Just recently, I became Facebook friends with all the Gen 6 cars. Yeah, they're on Facebook. How about that? Now, you think those cars are fierce on the track? You should see what happens when those inanimate objects hop on social media. Whoa. What's up, Gen Sixers? Look who joined the win club last week. Good for you, Benedict Arnold. Benedict Arnold? Isn't that the guy who made my eggs this morning? No, Hammond, it's because Kenseth used to drive a Ford. Now he drives a Toyota. 
Well, no one had a tougher start than me. Yeah, number 11. You look like you lost weight. About 25,000 pounds worth. <laughs> hey, 11, you think that's tough? Try racing around here in this all day. Loose, loose, loose. Oh, the 48's online. Five times in a wiki wiki. His house, Gen 6. How about championship number six? Oh, great. Mr. I can't do anything wrong chimes in. Don't you guys have a restart to complain about? Oh, that's a burn. That 99 should be black flag for two illegal restarts. This is getting pretty good. Enough complaining. The defending and future champs love the new setup. No one better than us. Yo, what place is the number two in the standings, Einstein? Einstein? Is it the number two driven by Keselowski? Ugh, oh, I give up. I'm just gonna defriend Jeff Hammond. But you know what I will do? I'll friend Chris Myers. You think I'll accept, Chris? Actually, on Twitter, I, I, and in real life, I tried to block him. So <laughs> if, you, if you could do that. Uh, thanks for that report. All right, speaking of social media, Jeff Gordon's Pepsi Max driving stunt video has gone viral. More than 22 million views. Here's a clip. I report, you decide, fake or real. <laughs> So Mike, Steve, nice to meet you, Mike. But I, I've never driven anything like this before. Well, I, I tell you what, I think a way to really make you feel comfortable would be to put you behind the wheel. Well, we better buckle up. Yeah, good call. You are liable for any damages to the vehicle, so please stop the car. Watch it! Watch out! Watch out. Cops. No, it's just a prank. We're just having fun. Sorry, man. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Can we do it again? Yeah. <laughs> All right, time for gas to go, and uh, we're on the clock. I'll start with you guys. Uh, did you think the Gordon video was real? Yes, it's. Uh, I still think it's real. What? No, I, I, I really didn't, because I don't think Gordon made a very good Mikey, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Uh, kind of geeky. I think yeah, they had a stunt geeky. driver. Uh, Daryl, uh, the restart rules, questioning by some drivers, does NASCAR need to be more defined on the double file restart? Rules? Listen, I like the way they're policing it right now. As long as somebody doesn't take advantage of somebody, you get it close, few inches apart, coming across the line. I think that's what I'm seeing. And also, you have the option of giving it back if you do make a big move and, and you know you've made a mistake. So I like the way they're doing it right now. Yeah, an exciting part of, uh, of racing. All right, uh, Kyle Busch hasn't finished in the top five in his last three Bristol races. But before that, Michael, he won four of the previous five. We know he's on the pole today. Yeah, we get that other Kyle today. I saw him at driving <laughs> introduction. He's very confident looking forward to racing. All right, and our Twitter question for both of you, I'll start with you, Daryl. Does NASCAR, this came from Dustin, does NASCAR need more short tracks? By all means, they need more short tracks. The short tracks are the backbone of this sport. It's what the sport was built on. It's the foundation. I love the action on the short tracks. You could just feel the energy down there with the drivers. They're all excited about getting out there and roughing it up. I love short track racing. You can reach out and touch someone. It's the first of six short track races for the entire season. I think we could all use some more. Daryl will head upstairs, and we'll have more on the pre-race show in just a moment. This past Tuesday in New York City, members of the NASCAR community attended Speeding for the Cure, a fundraiser at the Metropolitan Museum of Art to benefit the charity Autism Speaks. It raised about $1.2 million for children and families affected by autism. Our own director, Artie Kempner and Michael Walchip, were among those in attendance. You're watching NASCAR on Fox here in Bristol, Tennessee, as we count you down to the start of this race over the half-mile track. Time for the invocation in our national anthem. So let's take you trackside for this special moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as the Tennessee National Guard presents our nation's colors. And now join us as Mike Reif of Van Sant Church of Christ in Van Sant, Virginia offers today's invocation. Dear God, we thank you for being our provider and our protector. You have provided us salvation that has come through your son, Jesus Christ. You have provided us with a great host and sponsor of today's race. And we pray that you will protect each driver, their team, their families, and each fan 
and we pray a special blessing upon all the soldiers who are serving in our armed forces here at home and throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen. In support of our troops, please place your right hand over your heart and welcome Specialist Mary Potts from the 129th Army Band, Tennessee National Guard, as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Say, does that star spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free? Drivers, their families, and their fans ready for 266 and a half laps. You're watching NASCAR on Fox, and the start of the race is that close. We hope you stay tuned. After Jeff Gordon's car getting through technical inspection, pushing it into space there, he starts 11th. No driver starting 11th has ever won the race here at Bristol. Something for Gordon to work on, even though he has won here before. And if you think you know something about speed, buckle your seatbelt. Play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge. Simply call FAST from your mobile phone to predict who will have the fastest times today. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network AT&T Rethink Possible. Well, Denny Hamlin won this race last year, but Brad Keselowski has won two of the last three. You were in the garage. Uh, what are the drivers, crew chiefs most concerned about? A little bit of concern about the left side tires, which is great for us because we're going to see a lot of strategy and teams opting to get lefts instead of rights, possibly. But the left front tire specifically is, specifically is graining up, and when it grains up, it loses grip. So the crew chiefs are concerned about the tire wear. There was some question about an early caution competition, yellow as you like to call it. Looks like we're going to ride it out. The weather, as we said, not a problem so far it rained earlier it's in the forecast for later this afternoon but the track and the drivers are ready to roll kyle bush who won the nationwide race yesterday here is a seven to one choice jimmy johnson a five to one favorite let's head down trackside for the command ladies and gentlemen please welcome head football coach of the university of tennessee butch jones as he delivers the words we've all been waiting to hear from the orange and white checkerboards at the University of Tennessee to the black and white checkered flag at Bristol. Drivers, start your engine! They have played football games here before 
at this location, this Coliseum. And Michael, real quick, your choice for today, if you're looking at somebody? I like both the Bushes. One okay. of those two guys will be and, tough today. And as we uh, welcome in the guys who will be calling the race, I know, Daryl, you, you mentioned to it, you, you, you don't know you had a good day unless Monday you're calling somebody to apologize <laughs> for exactly what happened today. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what I told Chris for. I said, you're not having a good day here unless Monday you got to call a lot of guys and apologize for what happened today. Well, that's because this is racing's Roman Coliseum. This is where 43 drivers go out there, put on their helmets, grab their lances and their swords and their gladiators. This is where racing is truly a contact sport. Daryl, you've won here 12 times. What will be the key today? I think the key today might be pace. Uh, the cars are so fast, and, and these cars are creating a lot of downforce, a lot of grip through the corners. These guys are going to be working harder than I think they've worked here in a long, long time. They're going to want to run that bottom if they can, but that's the hardest place to race, shortest way around the racetrack. But the speed, I cannot get over the speed around this racetrack. Minimum speed in the corner in qualifying, 100 miles an hour. Everywhere else, you're faster, Larry, with a car that's 150 pounds lighter than the one we raced here last year. Uh, can speed be a problem? Absolutely it can. Almost every driver in the field qualified quicker than the pole speed one year ago, a lot due to this Generation 6 car. And the fact that three drivers broke their track record, and they're going around this half-mile racetrack in just a little over 15 seconds. The straightaways are only 650 feet long. I saw in practice a driver would be in trouble at the end of the back stretch a driver in turn one and two would get into that same problem it's the classic case you can run but you can't hide all right well the best news here is that the thunder in thunder valley is going to come from the ground up and not from the skies downward this is where the thunder rolls this is thunder valley this is Speedway, where checkered flags and tempers have flown since 1961. When the first race was run here in front of a capacity crowd of 8,000. Here's your Geico starting grid for today's race. Five-time cup winner here, Kyle Busch, with Casey Kane, who has his fourth Bristol front row start. Denny Hamlin, winner here last August. Brian Vickers, only driver to finish top five here in both races last year. Paul Menard, top 10 twice last year, and Jamie Mack, his best start since Phoenix in November 11. Brad Keselowski, the champ, has won two of the last three Bristol races. Tony Stewart, a 2001 winner here. Martin Truex finished top three in two of the last three here. And Joey Logano, eighth last August, his best Bristol finish. Five-time Bristol winner Jeff Gordon and two-time winner Matt Kenseth. Jimmy Johnson, five-time, has top ten finishes in seven of his last eight here. And David Gilliland, third in final practice. Casey Mears led here last August. Jeff Burton won here in 2008. Montoya and Harvick. Bush and Almirola complete the top 20, Daryl. All right, let's talk to our uh, champion here, Brad Keselowski. DW, got a coffee, buddy? Yes, sir, bud. How are you? Doing well, young man. Hey, you've, uh, you've kind of owned this joint here lately. What can we expect out of that two-car today? Well, that's a good question, D.W. I'm not quite so sure myself. Uh, you know, the track is going to change a lot here with the rain and washing all the rubber out. That's going to probably produce a lot of comers and goers. So hopefully we can be uh, one of the comers at the end and get towards the front and uh, get the two middle right forward and Victor Lane. Are you concerned about the pace at all? It's going to be fast. Oh, it's going to be blistering fast. We've already seen that with the track record set this weekend. and. Uh, you got to have something left at the end to set that kind of pace. So we got to think about that the whole race. You know how many challenges there are here. You've won it 12 times. And I'd like to get closer to that number of yours. It starts right now. All right, young man. Well, you got the right attitude. Embrace this joint and take it to victory circle. Good luck. Thanks, bud. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Well, we started the morning with a 70% chance of rain. It is now, in some forecasts, drifted down to 10%. So rain not a factor, not quite clear skies. To go 500 laps at Bristol today, they'll crawl down pit road at 30 miles an hour. And to the rear, due to engine changes, Ricky Stenhouse and David Reagan. This race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Down to pit road while they can still hear us, Steve Burns. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Well, no doubt, Kyle.
Bush will start first, but you've heard a lot about the blistering pace. His crew chief, Dave Rogers, just told me taking care of his brakes may be the only way Kyle Bush will finish first to Matt Yoakum. Steve, no driver has more motivation today than Brian Vickers after a medical hiatus due to blood clots. He returned last year, almost winning both Bristol races. He told me moments ago before he climbed in his car, his early concern, just how green this racetrack is, but he loves the positive as pit stall right off turn two, Chris Devota. There was a reason Jeff Gordon's car was one of the last ones through technical inspection. They had to make a lot of adjustments this morning. Crew Chief Alan Gustafson told me he did not have a warm and fuzzy feeling about the car, but Jeff Gordon with five wins loves Bristol even when it doesn't love him. Jeff Hammond. Krista, Bristol has always been reality road rage, whether it's Stuart Gordon, whether it's Danica Patrick or Kenseth. It doesn't matter because what those crew, what those teams tell about on the racetrack, well, the crews are going to have to fix, and I'll be waiting on them. So let the belt town begin. Ford Pace car about to make that sharp left turn. Here it scoots away from the field. It'll come to pit road, and the fans will come to their feet. Boys, no truer words were ever spoken than Boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go racing, boys! Kyle Busch elected the outside lane and jumped out ahead of Casey Kane, and he is... He is setting sail. That's what we uh, saw all during practice. That 18 car just a scotch quicker than everybody else. Yeah, right now, though, Casey Kane has his hands full. You can see Brian Vickers in the 55, and now Denny Hamlin moves up beside Casey Kane. And, you know, we talked about the track and the rain and everything. This track still has a lot of rubber on it. You can see how dark it is. It's got a lot of grip in it. Vickers to second. Hamlin to third. Kane settles in in fourth. Darrell, it's thought that the low groove, the bottom of the racetrack, will be quick early on, but the groove will migrate up top before we get too far into this race. Yeah, once the cars start to come around and start to lap people, and you got to find it, you know, you got to get by them, you'll start to use that high line. And then I think we'll see a, a mixture of both, a mixed bag, high and low today. Teammates fight for 12th. Gordon gets the spot from Johnson. Keslowski battles Kenseth in the 20 on the outside. A couple of drivers that battled for the win a year ago here at Bristol, Kenseth and Kozlowski. Martin Truex has been very successful here, trying to find his way back to victory lane in his 56. Alongside Kozlowski, working the high side. Got a, got a heck of a battle right here between the 11 and the 55. Brian Vickers and, uh, and Hamlin, they're really working on each other. Hamlin was all over the 55 just a lap ago. Remember, Mark Martin's been in this car this season. This is the first start in the 55 this year for Brian Vickers, but in practice and qualifying, he looked like he'd never been away. And as you mentioned earlier, two top fives last year. Tony Stewart got kicked up high in turn one and got way up in the marbles and pays the price. He's going the long way back. Flat left rear. That's what it looks like to me. There's something wrong with that car. It looked like the left rear was down. And the problem is there's there, it's going to spin. That'll bring the caution out. Top there, guys. We're, we're, we're wrecked here. Michael McDowell also spins, and a bad week gets worse for Tony Stewart. The three Stewart Haas cars were never in the top 20 in any of the practices. Now, here's one lap prior. He's in trouble here already. I, I don't know if, I'm sure he made contact with someone to get that tire, to cut that tire down. But uh, he got in trouble before uh, before we really could see what caused it. And Mike, we talked about it. You go around here so fast, he was trapped on the outside. He could not get the pit road for all the cars coming below. Like you said, Daryl, don't where to hide. No, there's nowhere to hide it. When you get it, when you have trouble here, first, what happened, buddy? Well, GW was, in fact, a flat left rear tire, tire going down. He just apologized to his crew and said, guys, I had nowhere to go. I could not get to the bottom of the racetrack. I mean, you can definitely see it right there, and it finally just comes apart. I guarantee you, with just looking at the car and the tire, he made contact with somebody and cut that tire down. You know, if you think back to last year, same thing happened to Je uh, Jeff Gordon here with uh, racing his teammate, Dale Earnhardt. Wow, 
Things happen so fast here at Bristol. You're right, guys. Tony was just trying to get to the bottom, couldn't do it. That left rear tire blew out. Daryl, I didn't see the Goodyear Eagle rubbed off that tire when I first noticed Tony being in trouble. So I don't know if it was contact or not, but certainly there's some concerns about tires. It would be way too early for the tire to have any problem other than either someone ran into him or it indeed did just cut. Yeah, you run so you run the air pressure so low in the left side tires, you can tear a tire up with low air pressure. Tony Stewart was running 13th when he brought out the first caution of the day. Side by side. Let's pinch our dreams. Let's wake them up. Make them real. Let's not let anything hold us back. Not even 292,000 pounds. Let's keep our head in the stars, our feet on the ground, and nothing will be beyond our reach. Toyota, let's go places. So do you guys think being fast is better than being slow? Yes! It's better to be fast, to not be bitten by a werewolf, and then you'll be turned into one, and you'll have to stay in, and then you'll have to get shaved because it'll be too hot, and then you're like, which means I wish I was back to a human. What? It's not complicated. Faster is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest 4G LTE network for your iPhone 5. There's just something about NASCAR. The thunder of the flyover. The smell of burnt rubber. Metal grinding metal at 190 miles per hour. The pack flying by in a blur of colors, lap after lap. We love this stuff as much as you do. So when the green flag drops, we'll be right there cheering with you. Lowe's, proud fans of NASCAR. 13 laps complete under caution. Kyle Busch has led them all. He's been class of the field here this weekend. Let's go back a few laps and see if we can see contact between Tony Stewart and another car that may have begun to cut down that tire. There's Stewart. And right in the middle of the picture, here comes Martin Truex in the 56. The blue car. Right. I think they actually made contact going into this corner right here. Right. Yeah. Can't see there, but they, they, they're even closer together going into three. I, I, they almost had to make contact. Well, there's the result. And they believe they may have cut a brake line, uh, Steve told us. That's why Stewart's car is now behind the wall making further repair. Tony's only had three top fives in 22 races here since his 2001 win. Yeah, this track has not been kind to Tony whatsoever the last three or four years. I've talked about attitude, and I think when you come to a track and you don't have any success, you develop a bad attitude. Suspension cam, this is Martin Truex's car. Looks like they got a little heat boot over that shock absorber. Yeah, that's a heat shield to keep that shock from getting the heat from these headers and everything. It breaks in the headers and all. You want to keep that shock cool if you can. There is the restart area at the beginning of that box, and that's not St. Patrick's Day green on the track. That's a, a video effect. Kyle can start there, or he can start there, and if he doesn't go by the end of the box, the flagman will start the race. Somebody need to show Brian Vickers that box on our screen, because he didn't go. Yeah, he did not get going at all, a lot like Casey Kane at the start of the race. Kane retakes second. That's where he started. Here comes Paul Menard on the outside, the 27th for third. I think we better keep an eye on Paul Menard in that 27 car. Go back to last year, two top 10 finishes. He's quiet, but he's effective, and he's always around at the end. I talked to his crew chief, Slugger Labby, this morning. He said the same thing, Larry. He said, give us a little love today. I think we're going to run pretty good. Hamlin on the bottom, his teammate, Kenseth, the 20 on the outside. Matt Kenseth is the one on the move. Started back in the 12th position, and only with about 11 or 12 green flag laps, he has now cracked the top five. Hamlin hangs tough on the inside. But Matt's not going to let him in up top. 
That's not his job to do that. No, they're teammates, but there you go. Not on the racetrack. A little cooperation there. Just a little. Now, what a dogfight between Kurt Busch and Juan Pablo Montoya in the opening laps of this run. They get three wide under Casey Mears. There's a bit of contact, and they continue to run each other hard. They're still side by side. Yeah, it's a little early in the race. Remember what I said, you got to pick your fights. This is no time to be picking a fight with somebody. There they are. That's a couple of drivers, though. I think they sometimes have the attitude, you hit me once, I'm going to hit you back three times. Battling hard for 15th place right now. About a quarter lap behind the leaders. But, you know, watching these two just shows you the difference in Kurtz down on the bottom, run the low line. Gains a little time right there. Then off the corner, Montoya gains it back. So it's a real chess match trying to get in front of that guy to slide up in front and do the old slide job if you get a chance. Tony Stewart comes back to the racetrack. He's lost at least a dozen laps. Have to bring out the first caution of the day. You're riding with Harvick, and here, yeah, here comes Stewart at the tail end of the field to feel things out. The battle is for fourth. Hamlin on the inside. Vickers up high. Drops in. Now, yeah, Matt Kenseth in that 20 car, he's going to try the bottom. Tried to complete the slide job, DW, but didn't quite clear it. I believe he'll get him on this end, though. That car is really like, it's a lot like his teammate, Kyle Busch, really fast right through the center of the corner on the bottom. Matt Yoakum. And Mike, that's one of the areas they really wanted to improve on with the handling of the 20 car, trying to pin it down the bottom. The guy they were more concerned about on the bottom was the one in McMurray. They've made improvements right now. Gets to this car is free on entry and through the center, but as you can see, he's moving up and fast. You know, what I like, what I'm seeing right now is the fact, yeah, everyone's about two grooves up the racetrack, but if you want, if your car's driving good, you can turn it to the bottom and make that pass. Yeah, and it's a little early to be making any rash decision about what your car's going to do. The track's going to change a little bit. Tires are going to wear a little bit. If it's good right now, just go stay with it. Work with it. Kozlowski, Gordon, and Truex, 8th, 9th, and 10th. 28 laps in. battles Harvick and Jeff Burton, the children's teammates, for 16th position. Yeah, Kurt is committed to the bottom. He has not made any uh, any effort at all uh, to move up. And he's cost him a couple of spots, but he's hanging in there on the bottom. Burton had a slide going into turn three, and that would allow Bush the top side if he wants it, and he does. Here comes Burton back on the bottom. Jeff Burton told me this morning, this first run, before you make the first pit stop, this is the toughest run of the day. The track's not really rubbered up. The car's going to be tight. Things these, will get better from here on out. These two guys right here, uh, uh, the 55 or 56 and the 24, they are working on each other. They have made a lot of contact the last couple of laps. Finally, Mark Trix Jr. to 56 gets by. Now they're five seconds behind the leader. As things tighten up front. Casey Kane closing on Kyle Busch, who is our Toyota top performer. 32 laps into this race. Yeah, not only is Casey Kane closing, he is there, but we're about to start catching the tail end of the field as far as lapping some drivers. That's when you start using those slow cars as picks. You know, you can use them down low, up high, ever how you want to work it, but you can use them for picks and keep that guy behind you. There's the interval shrinking slightly, and here it really is a game of hundredths of a second. And it's a game of chess, too, once you get in lap traffic like this. Which way is he going to go? Got to pick the right line. We saw that yesterday in the Saturday race. The fast cars move to the top groove, which has a steeper banking than the bottom. Sprint invites you to call Tom. He's standing by with a helicopter. Really. 43 laps complete in Bristol, Tennessee. Kyle Bush ahead of Casey Kane. Who puts Danica Patrick one lap down. And it's been lap traffic that's enabled Kyle to keep that lead over Kane, who has been right there to his bumper. While we were away, Martin Truex had a slide to the top of turns three and four. 
that saw him get into the wall coming down the front straightaway as he recovered. Watch the 56. We got a little bit too high that time, Larry, up in the gray stuff. Slight contact, just a little kiss. Yeah, there's not a lot of grip up there. You can see how white that part of the racetrack is. He just ran out of racetrack coming off turn four. Matt? And Mike, fans aren't seeing double. There are two Napa cars in the field today. And the crew chiefs, Chad Johnson and Rodney Childers, had a game plan. Whichever team qualified higher, they would choose whichever straightaway they wanted to pin on. Because when you look at the cars coming down pit road, they look almost identical because of the, the hood placement of the decals and the paint scheme. So less confusion, hopefully less mistakes on pit road. All right, no Truex's car is blue all over except down around the bottom. Boyer's car has the uh, A, B, and C pillars in the back of the roof in yellow, but that's all to that distinguish them. Boy, we have a little mini wad right here. These guys have been all over the place, high, low, in between. Uh, a lot of movement, a lot of action right in this little group of cars right here. How about that 38, David Gilliland? Front Row Motorsports had tough luck to start the season. All three of their cars in one big wreck in Daytona. Tough week at Phoenix. Boy, if they come back, Gilliland has been fast here all weekend long. Yeah, he just made a little contact with the 56, too. But yikes, I don't know if that's going to work or not. <laughs> It'll work through the corner, just not sure on the exit of the corner. But another driver, Casey Mears, in that 13, good qualifying effort. And he just drove by David Gilliland. Oh, Kurt, he just keeps working that bottom, working that bottom. I've been watching Brad Keselowski in the two car. It's almost like in the middle of the corner, especially down in three and four. He's almost holding this group up. That's how Joy Logano and Jimmy Johnson got by. Truex to the bottom now. Here's Steve. And Mike, Brad Keselowski is definitely tight in the center. In fact, his spotter, Joey Meyer, was saying the leader is running a width or two higher than you in the turn, but he can't get it to turn. Yeah, if you're tight, I mean, that's a good thing to do. Move up the hill a little bit. You a little bit freer up there. Casey Kane with some clear traffic ahead. He's right back after. Oh, hard in the wall, Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton got sent into the turn one wall stop. as things low, stacked up low, behind low, him. Low. And we're Driver under caution for the second time. Quite a bit of damage. Marcus Ambrose heavily involved. Yeah, damage on the right front of the nine. My foot got jammed in between the uh, gas and the uh, in the firewall. I can't get my foot out. That's Jeff Burton. See, it starts with uh, the 13 getting turned around, Casey Mears, and then Burton got into Montoya and said his foot stuck from that contact, and into the wall he went. Yeah, you can tell the 30, the 31, uh, Burton. He just never lets up. He runs right into the back of the 42. And this was going on in front of him. Yeah, this was that little mini wad you were talking about. So then Burton gets a shunt from Carl Edwards. Man. Bouncing all over the place. And things wad up here in a hurry. Remember, they pit on both sides of the racetrack here. And Danica Patrick on this caution is the Aaron's lucky dog. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. The pits are open. Matt. Top of your screen, Matt Kenseth said that his car early on was very free on entry and through the center, but then it started to tighten up about 20% more, but didn't get any worse. They're taking out four. Meanwhile, Casey Kane, you can see he is already away. He said his car was great. Krista felt good, just two tires. Denny Hamlin also the call for two left side tires. He said he's a little free in tight center. Tire grip is great, Steve. Krista Kyle Bush saying his car is just a little snug in the center of one and two. Now they have contemplated taking two tires, but at the last second, Dave Rogers said, let's take four. The only place in Sprint Cup racing where they pit on both sides of the racetrack. Casey Kane is going to win the race off pit road from Denny Hamlin and Paul Menard. So a dust up, eight cars in front of them involving Casey Mears. Ended up catching that yellow car of Jeff Burton. A hit from Carl Edwards and Burton's in the wall and we're under caution. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing Hot Box is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by Olympus Has Fallen.
When our flag falls, our nation will rise. Olympus has fallen. Starts Friday, rated R. 60 laps complete, second caution of the day. A lot of work being done on Jeff Burton and Carl Edwards' car. Now, Kyle Busch has been caught for speeding in three segments of the pit road, which reaches all the way around the racetrack. Yeah, now this is what segments back in 2011. You can see Starks all the way over there. But now where he was busted was in this segment, this segment, and this segment as far as the two pit roads. And all that timing is done electronically. It's not subject to uh, appeal or interpretation. You're speeding, you're speeding. Okay. You get a five mile an hour tolerance over the 30 mile an hour limit. And anything over that, you're busted. I just wonder, Larry, if taking four tires, if they knew that's what they're going to do, and he was trying to make up a little time, trying to be sure they had an extra time to put four tires on. I, didn't, I don't know about that strategy. Yeah, because pretty much the majority of the drivers went with just two tires, be it some lefts, some rights. Here's today's Ford EcoBoost track facts. Ford won seven of the first 11 races at Bristol. Elliott Sadler won from 38th in March 2001, deepest in the field for a Bristol winner. And Carl Edwards has the last two Ford victories at the world's fastest half mile. Here's Carl ready for this restart. He'll race start in the back along with Jeff Burton. And Kyle Busch due to the penalty on Kyle. Also a penalty for Tony Stewart. Too many men over pit wall. There is the restart box. That's the earliest that Casey Kane can go right there. And he's on it with Denny Hamlin alongside for the restart. Jeff Gordon thought about three wide. Realized that wasn't a great idea. Not right then. Montoya to the back. Matt. Mike, there was concern in the 42 pit about the car lagging on the restart. Something to miss there. They actually told him try to stay half a lane more down so if the car does stall or lag you don't cause a, a crash and get yourself in trouble as well that way you can hit the apron that's exactly what he did lead change denny hamlin takes it on the low side to the front like what i'm seeing that low will work you got to get out there and hustle the car but you can't work the bottom yeah and he's still he moved up a little bit in three and four but pulling away from casey kane in the five right now Gordon outside Johnson. Harvick in the 29, best seat in the house for that battle. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson, a little concerned about his car today, uh, Mike. Uh, the car was off pace just a little bit in practice, but they always seem to find a way. And I've got to say the same thing about Jeff Gordon in the 24, but Steve, how about Paul Menard? Larry Mack with the race started. Paul Menard was just a little bit tight, but he said the track's starting to come to me. He's turning really well. He said his car is great in the center, just a little bit loose on the drive off. They took two tires and made an air pressure dump it on that last stop. Whoa, and Jeff Gordon slid right up in front of him and got a little boot from Menard for his trouble. Menard said, you know, I don't appreciate their, their uh, Mr. Gordon. That was almost a slide job that went bad. Yeah, it was. Maybe that was Mikey driving the car then. Joey Logano, 10th, right where he started. Had picked up a couple spots, gave back a couple. Running bottom of the racetrack, Matt Kenseth comes up alongside in the 20. And Kozlowski on the outside. Yeah, Joy Logano, the 22, one of the drivers that oh, with oh, four trouble tires. right here, turn four. But Murray goes around in the wall, and everybody's going to miss him. There was some new guys that banged into each other, but there was some, 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 some didn't. Jamie McMurray was running third in that number one Chevrolet. He just got up a little too high, like we saw Martin Truex do, and there's not any grip right up next to the wall. Terry Labonte is the first car one lap down. He'll get the free pass. Watch the black he, number one. You see him up there. He's in that gray stuff, and he just no traction there whatsoever. Nothing you can do. You pick up that debris on your tires, and around you go. Let's ride with Jimmy Johnson. Very, very nice job right there. Darrell, I think it's two things. There's no grip up there, plus all the rubber balls that come off the tires go up there, and it's absolutely like your own ice. Yes, sir came in for a rough landing right there. 
Our pole sitter Kyle Busch restarted 35th. He gained five positions prior to this caution. Seeing a few takers on pit road. They only run eight laps since they restarted. Well, we've run 71 laps, and the best I can count, we got about eight or ten cars with a lot of damage on them already. Well, that's what they're trying to do to Greg Biffle is do a little front end repair. Denny Hamlin, your leader. Casey Kane second as Jamie McMurray goes around. Seventy-five laps complete at Bristol, Tennessee in the Food City 500. Third caution flag of the day as Jamie McMurray spun off turn number four. And Greg Biffle had a bit of difficulty. Riding with Clint Boyer, that's Biffle just in front of him. Uh, back and down, back and down, back and down, back and down, back and down. Nice job. Trying to get through the accident scene, here's what happens. You know, Mike, I don't know if it's additional speed or not, but I've seen more cars piling in on each other than I think I've ever seen here before. I know it's a problem always, but it seems to be a bigger problem this weekend. Well, remember, Daryl, under green, the slowest you're going in the corner is 100 miles an hour. You don't have much time to react to whatever's happening in front of you. And Greg Biffle has other issues. Matt Yoke was telling me during commercial break these cars have two batteries. His first battery, battery one, is already out. He needs to see a guy named Skip. Denny Hamlin is now the leader. Kyle Busch, Hamlin, Casey Kane, and David Reagan have had the front spot. Finishing up the third caution. Seamax at the head of the field has the lights out, so it's about to head for pit road. We're about to go back for green. You saw Kyle Bush a minute ago, our pole sitter, the pit road speeding penalty, 24th position right now. Terry Labonte got the free pass, so 36 lead lap cars. Take the restart, and Hamlin had a little stutter when he grabbed the next gear. Kane was right with him heading for turn one, but now it's Kurt Busch trying to take second place away from Kane. Hey, that 78 car, Larry, he's been, he's been pretty impressive. He ran the bottom there a lot of laps and made some good moves. Now he's working that outside a little bit. That car is really fast. And that man has won here five times as well. Talking about Kurt Busch. Montoya back in the race, 13 laps down. Trying to cure that problem. And they single file it past him. Hamlin in front, Kurt Busch second, Kane third, Gordon fourth, and Truex completing the top five. And we're riding with Jimmy Johnson there in that 48 car. He was struggling looking for speed a big part of the weekend. Looks like they found it for him. Yeah, he and, and his teammate both, uh, Jeff Gordon, those cars look a lot better today and they did all through practice. And qualifying is four decades. Ricky Stenhouse has come from the back after having replaced an engine during opening practice Stenhouse up to 18th in that number 17 and they are another driver the last time they came to pit road they went with four tires on their stop watching from Clint Boyer's car at Stenhouse and here comes Kyle trying to overcome a speeding penalty no speed limit now as we're under the green flag and he's up to 19th place. Yeah, he, he restarted so about 30th. He's so good around the bottom. And this, I love the gyro, man. This thing is the coolest thing we've ever come up with. Just think, this is what the driver has to deal with two times a lap. This thing is throwing you into the corner, into the banking. Tremendous amount of G-force, and you do that in 15 and a half seconds, lap after lap after lap. This is something our producer, Barry Landis, asked for. The folks at BSI developed it. NASCAR approved it. And uh, we want to thank Kyle Busch and his team, who were a late addition this week to our on onboard camera list, for taking you along for the ride. Some people say, are you, are you an athlete? I say, no, I think I might be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Stenhouse and Bush battle for 18. Boyer trying to regain the groove just in front of them, and Vickers just behind in the 55. At 18, he did, the, the one place I've been impressed with his car, he could run the bottom and maintain a lot of speed right through the center of the turn. That's something that they told me they really worked hard on. Here's Dale Jr. in ninth place, Matt. 
and Steve Letard and Julie talking over that last caution. And, and Stevie was telling Dale that he was showing great patience out there. Junior said the car was a little on the tight side. When they made those two tires, they got some more track position. But that car is absolutely hooked up, and he is the biggest mover so far all the way up to nine. Yeah, started back in the 28th position, Matt, so he has definitely been on the move. Nothing wrong with your car being a little tight. That's a good thing on this track. Look at the gap that Denny Hamlin's opened up. Half a second may not sound like much, but uh, <laughs> he had one of the bigger leads of the day, and now Kurt Busch is reeling him in. That's, that's breathing room. You got just a little bit of breathing room when you look back and see that gap. Danica Patrick right behind A.J. Allmendinger and David Stremme. Here's some of their pre-race discussion. Uh, let's, uh, let's over-communicate today. A lot happens really fast here, so we can get to the end of this and uh, bring it back. All four wheels for the decent finish. You got it. I, I, you know, I hear that, and I understand it, but I think she's so conscious of getting involved in a race and getting knocked out of races that's I think she needs to be a little more aggressive, push it a little bit harder, and don't worry about wrecking. Pushing it is Casey Kane. Kane got right up and alongside Kurt Busch, but could not complete the pass for second. Now they lap past Tony Stewart's ailing car. After Stewart was in the wall, securing out the first caution of the day, and now they picked up a, a hitchhiker, Kristen. Jeff Gordon's right with them for second. Mike, at the start of the race, I talked about the adjustments the 2014 made. Those adjustments worked early. Jeff said his car was great. And until that pit stop, now he says it's tight. Well, I think one reason these drivers are start complaining more and more about their cars being tight or not turning is we're starting to get more and more rubber down just as we anticipated. I mean, it is St. Patrick's Day. We did have a green racetrack when we started, but it is rubbering up, and that will change the way the cars drive. There's a stream that flows out back around the back side of the property, and they put vegetable dye in it on St. Patrick's Day. It is greener than Danica's car. <laughs> well, Casey Kane in this five, he just keeps working the bottom of the racetrack and working over Kurt Busch, that 78, trying to get a good enough run to do that slide job on him. <laughs> but now he's going to lose the spot to Jeff Gordon, the 24, his teammate. Yeah, that's the discouraging part. You get down there, you get a run on the guy, and you think you got him passed, and all of a sudden you look to your right, somebody took the spot away. There are the four Hendrick Chevrolets, and where they are at 100 of 500 laps, Forbes magazine named Hendrick Motorsports the most valuable, I'll use the word franchise, these are not, this is not a franchise sport, but the most valuable multi-car operation in racing. Yeah, the guy leading the race, they're the second most valuable. And gaining. Denny Hamlin's Toyota in front of Kurt Busch's Chevrolet. We've just crossed through 100 of 500 laps. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox Live in Bristol, Tennessee. A time for an AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G LTE network. And there is your leader, Denny Hamlin, who won this race last year. His Joe Gibbs teammate, Kyle Busch, has led the most laps so far. Early wreck for Tony Stewart. He's back out on the track, but out of the picture. So struggling for a three-time champion. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer moving on up. Michael Waltrip, who ran 104 laps in practice, the most of all drivers. Yeah, I talked to Clint about that, and he said he just needs to find a rhythm. This is a place where timing is everything. You go so fast here, any little bobble can throw you off. He wanted to feel comfortable behind the wheel. And Boyer up to 13th. He's the only driver who was in the top 10 in all six of these short track races last year. Dale Earnhardt Jr. qualified 32nd. He won here back in 2004 from the 30th position. So now he's up to ninth. I'm just impressed with this team. Every week it seems like they get behind at the start, but then they rally and get toward the front. Already inside the top 10 this early in the race. Watch for Jr. later. And Kyle Busch, we mentioned the pole sitter who led the last, but then for the second week in a row, some problems on pit road. Yeah, and you can see he's going by Brett Keselowski 
Keselowski here on the outside. Brad is struggling. That car isn't working well. Kyle is really fast. Both the Bushes are really fast. You spoke about Kurt Busch, his brother in the pre-race, to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's running second. He's been down low. I think it's important, Chris, at this stage in the race, they're going to ring the top more and more as the race wears on. If you've got a car you can dive down to the bottom and make passes with, that's going to be the key to winning. Struggling in the upper groove. Guys like Truex, and we saw McMurray spin out a little bit earlier. Something worth watching. We had five cautions total last year in this race, and we've already had three. Think you know something about speed? To play AT&T's fastest driver challenge, text FAST to your phone, 34763, and predict who you think will have the fastest times in today's race. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network, AT&T, Rethink Possible. With Michael Walter, Chris Myers, this has been an AT&T race break. More from Bristol, Tennessee in a moment. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Brought to you by Sprint. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., biggest mover up 21 spots after an engine change put him at the back. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Denny Hamlin leading by 1.3 seconds over Kurt Busch. Casey Kane, another half second back. And then a pack of cars. Jeff Gordon, Martin Truex, Harvick, Kenseth, Earnhardt, Menard. That guy right there, he is wheeling the, I mean, he is driving the wheels off this car. And he's closing up on our leader here, uh, Denny Hamlin, as they get in traffic. That 78 car looking good. Casey Kane trying to close that gap in third, four tenths behind Kurt Busch. Started outside pole. Dropped back a bit, reclaimed second. That's where he's currently his third. Jeff Gordon fourth after starting 11th. A car that struggled all weekend in practice. And, and his teammate, you're riding with him, Jimmy Johnson, started back in the 13th position. So we got a Hendrick Trio running third, fourth, and fifth. Martin Truex Jr was up in the top five now he's eased back a bit he's 3.4 seconds off the lead and michael waltrip's toyota and here's kevin harvick for richard childress in a chevrolet harvick in seventh matt kenseth was as high as fifth about six or seven laps ago and got himself out of that storm that was brewing for fifth spot that's what i like about kenseth look where he is it's kind of what i always like to call the rocking chair Little gap in front of him, little gap behind him. Anything happens, you got time to get slowed up. Paul Menard, the 27, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 88. And that takes you through the top 10 at 136 laps. Time for a big NASCAR on Fox Thunder Valley crank em up. nicely from uh, that bit of crash damage he is up to 11th space uh, place Biffle has 18 Sprint Cup wins none on a short track nobody in the history of the sport has won that many races without winning on a short track but Biffle well we have got a battle for yeah, second do. place here with Casey Kane in the five his teammate Jeff Gordon in the 24 working on the top side of Kurt Busch in that 78. Now, Curtis, he is constantly committed to the bottom, and that kind of is hurting him at times, and it helps him at times. Looking on from Carl Edwards, who was involved in the Jeff Burton crash and uh, has a good bit of damage to his number 99. Carl is one lap down. 
And that trio there, they're closing in on Denny Hamlin in the 11 hour leader who is in very heavy traffic right now. Yeah, I've been watching the Hamlin, Larry, and he's, he's being very cautious. He doesn't push the issue. He waits for these guys to give him a break, and he takes it then. I mean, you just look right there. You can throw a blanket over first through seven. And here comes that five on the outside and see how Hamlin fares on the inside here. Looks like the five might get the position coming off the corner, and he does. Whoop. Had to let him have it back. Side by side for the lead. Carl Edwards ahead in the high groove. David Reagan in front of him. Hamlin slips up, has to get out of the throttle. Here comes Kane. That was close. It was. He got he come up off the bottom. The car has a tendency to want to push out and get loose. Hamlin trying to hold his lead. Kane gets a good launch off turn two. He's got him. Casey Kane to the lead. And he has friends too. Here comes all those Hendrick cars, all three of them. Michael? You know, guys, we talked about how important running the bottom will be as this race wears on. Denny Hamlin is unable to do so. He caught Carl Edwards and David Reagan to lap them, couldn't go anywhere, and here come, here come the trio of cars that run him down and pass them. You've got to be able to work the bottom at this racetrack. Denny's unable to do so right now. Meanwhile, Kurt Busch and Martin Truex had contact racing side by side. And while they're going side by side, they got a couple of friends behind them. Kevin Harvick in that 29 and Matt Kenseth in the 20. And boy, you can just feel the intensity of the 30 cars, Strimmy, and a couple of cars in there. Carl Edwards trying to stay on the lead lap as hard as they can. Things jam up in front as the 34. Reagan takes to the bottom. Three wide. Kane's going to split him. Strimmy on the high side. And this time it's the five uh, that has to lift and wait for an opening. Boy, these guys are working their steering wheels to death trying to stay on the lead lap. Kurt Busch coming back on the bottom. He's going after Hamlin. A nice little, this is, this is oh, a little. in the wall, turn two, the 38 of Gilliland. And that brings out the caution. Now, keep it up there, keep it up there. You got a bunch more coming. Had a great race going. Qualified well. He was running 17th and uh, brings out the fourth caution of the day. But that's why Carl Edwards, David Reagan, and David Strimmy were working so hard right there. Exactly, Larry. Right, they were trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap and not go one lap down when Gilliland found the wall exiting turn two. So, Daryl, tell me about this time release aggression oh, it's you've been early. speaking of this weekend. It's early, Mike. I mean, right now you're just working, the, you're working it up working up a little aggression internally. You'll let her out here later on today. We told you about Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. Their time release aggression may have kicked in a little early here. That's what happens when you run the high and the low and you gotta come together when you exit. All right, under caution at Bristol, everyone must enter the pits at turn two and exit at turn one. If you pit under green, you can exit and leave on your own side of the racetrack. But here it's all the way around. And I think we'll see a lot of four tire stops here. Remember, it's been about 90 to 100 laps since most of these drivers were on pit road. Matt. And Jimmy Johnson, top of your screen, he was second here last fall. He said, if anything, my car is a tick on the tight side. Chassis adjustment already completed. Meanwhile, pitting down in turn three is the five of Casey Kane. He said his car was very good. If anything, a little tight on the front loading. Small air pressure change for Kane. Four tires. Krista. Denny Hamlin got lost the lead on that because his car just got too tight. A four tire change and a track bar adjustment. Meanwhile, for Jeff Gordon, he was tight that entire run. He said he couldn't run the bottom at all. Steve? President Kirk Bush saying he's sliding the nose just a little bit. Crew Chief Todd Barrier said let's take four tires, no other adjustments. Kurt wants water and windshield service. Now, Kyle Bush came in the pits 13th. Let's see how he gets out. He changed just two right side tires. Remember, they changed four that last time, trying to get that track position back. Looks like he's going to come out second behind his teammate. But what a great recovery as we look back from Denny Hamlin. A great recovery from that speeding penalty for Kyle Busch, the pole sitter. Chris Myers. Thanks, Mike. It was on lap nine when Tony Stewart, who had struggled here lately, had a let rear tire go down. So now he's 0 for 23 in his last 23 trips here to Bristol. And there's a look at the tire. 
Yeah, Jeff Burton had problems here. Yeah, the cars piled up ahead of him, and Jeff got to the back of another car. And then Kyle Busch with problems in the pits. You can throw away these tacks now. I'm tired of it. Done. You ain't going to get any more on the pit road. Penalized for speeding on pit road, and that cost him. He had led 55 laps. And then Jamie McMurray was running third at the time earlier, bringing out another caution. And Michael struggling with that upper move is a, a problem and look at the race off pit road wow it looked like denny by just a couple of inches over his teammate kyle bush kyle is officially rebounded from that pit road speeding penalty let's go back to that upper group is that something that can change or evolve as we get more through this race you have to creep up there chris you can see how white it is up high you just need, need to put a little bit more rubber a little bit more rubber and you can run up there but we've seen a couple of guys get in trouble by getting up too high too soon let's go back up to mike joy five liters and five different lead changes mike <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Enter for a chance to win the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado LTZ, a VIP Chevy racing experience for two. Meet and greet Tony Stewart. Visit winthenewsilverado.com now to enter. I think what we're seeing, Mike, is when you have good tires, fresh tires, you can run the bottom. You can, you can pass people. As soon as the tires go away a little bit, you got to start moving around. All right, but now what about Kyle Busch, who has two tires when most of the other leaders have four? I think as good as his race car is right now, I think that was a smart move to get that track position. He, Jimmy McMurray, A.J. Allmendinger, are the only drivers that changed just two tires that time. We talk about the two pit roads at, Mar at uh, Bristol. Martinsville used to have two. Now only Bristol has pit stalls on both sides you can enter an exit on your own side where your own pit is under green but under caution everyone must enter at turn two and come all the way around and exit at turn one and in that case right there pretty much this right here is still considered part of pit road and you have to maintain pit road speed in the apron there and the ideal pit selections are right where those numbers are the four corners so it'll be joe gibbs toyota teammates denny hamlin and kyle bush on the front row for the restart Rick Hendrick Chevy teammates Casey Kane Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon in the next three positions then Kurt Busch Paul Menard Martin Truex Matt Kenseth Jamie McMurray are the top 10 we have 29 lead lap cars David Reagan got the free pass and we are back under green with Hamlin out front yeah Hamlin hammered it Woody I'll tell you he took off uh, got a little jump there We've got the two Joe Gibbs drivers that restarted first and second with three Hendrick drivers right behind them. Trouble for Bobby Labonte on the front straightaway. There was a lot of smoke and fluid out the tailpipe of his number 47. Yeah, I'd say that's terminal. Yeah, fluid out the pipe too. Hamlin steps out and Kyle Busch on the high side trying to hold back Casey Kane. That's the difference in four tires and two right there. The two, you're going to be able to maintain, but you're going to have to run that high line. That four tires are going to prevail around the bottom. Jimmy Johnson fourth, Kurt Busch fifth. You're riding with Johnson. And right behind them, Jeff Gordon looks on. Krista? Jeff Gordon's crew had a little bit of a slow stop. Jeff said he didn't realize that Alan Gustafson wanted four tires. That was not the reason for the slow stop. They just lost a couple of positions, but Jeff has been really happy with his race car. A little bit tight, but he knows he can make moves out there. And he has been, Krista. He's been kind of dive bombing, going into the turn low and letting the car run all the way up to the wall. Kane continues to battle for second with Kyle Busch. Jimmy Johnson, does he want to go high or low? Yeah, he, he's searching right now. He's trying to figure out, I think, which driver's going to prevail. And guess what? That 5 and 18, they could run that way for several laps. Yes, they could. And you have to sit there and watch for several laps. The bottom groove at Bristol Bank, 28 degrees. The top side was in the 30s, and they ground some of it down. So the top now is just 30 degrees, but that's enough of a difference. With this progressive banking, you can run side by side all day long. And Denny Hamlin is loving it because that yellow and black dot in his rearview mirror, they're getting smaller and smaller right now. Squeeze up, squeeze up, got him. That's what it takes. You got to get to that point where you got to squeeze up in front of that guy and hope he gives you a break. 
give is not a name, a word usually associated with Bristol. I said you got a hope. <laughs> got a lot of hope. Matt Kenseth, the 20, comes into the picture. Trying to back to back it. Last week's winner in Las Vegas. Jimmy Johnson and boy, he had to kind of squeeze yeah. there in the front straightaway to stay alongside oh, Kurt Bush. Boy. And and Bush again, <laughs> shuts he him down. Just got up in front of him. Remember, you gotta hope. Hope he gives me a break. Bush brothers, second and third. Johnson and Gordon, fourth and fifth, Kenseth sixth. All three Gibbs cars in the top half dozen. Then Truex, Harvick, and Boyer. Lonely Town. That's where Denny Hamlin is right now. 170 laps complete in Bristol. NASCAR's Sprint Cup Racing Hot Fox is sponsored by Toyota. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Aaron's. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. <laughs> One hundred eighty of five hundred laps complete at the world's fastest conveyor belt. That is Denny Hamlin. He's been in the lead since the last restart. Casey Kane flashes by in second, half a second back. But behind them, it's two point three seconds off the lead to a big group of cars led by Kyle Busch, our pole sitter, who has rebounded from a pit road speeding penalty. Steve. bit of help from that 78 car's brother back there. We haven't had a good family feud for a while, Larry, but they've been working on each other. Kyle is starting to inch away a little bit. Well, the last time they had one, it took all the way to Thanksgiving and grandmother to straighten them out, <laughs> get them back on the right path. Casey Kane catching Denny Hamlin in traffic. He laps David Gilliland. And Kane is there. Just yeah. a car length back. Yeah, Denny Hamlin is about to catch a lot of drivers that's on the verge of going a lap down. And one of them has a problem. The 83 of Rudiman, slow in the high groove. Smoking. Trying to get down to pit road. Looks like he'll make it. Matt? And that's the end of the five of Casey Kane currently running in the fourth position. Since that last stop, Mike, he says, if anything, the car is now a little more on the tighter side. The amazing thing is we talked about the top groove in turn three and four earlier. Now about all the drivers are working that top groove. They've gotten it rubbered in. And Larry, I see a lot of guys using other guys. Like right here, you get under a guy and the guy can, whoever it is, it can be that 33, a lap car, it can be anybody. When they don't let you slide up in front of them, it gets mighty testy. Landon Castle, the 33 with that wildfire camouflage paint scheme. Kane moves past him and once again draws a bead on the leader. Let's go back to eighth place where Martin Truex trying to hold back the 29. And for the lead, Kane is there. Yeah, Casey Kane got a great run off turn two, and there they are side by side. Krista, what about the 11? Denny Hamlin just came on the radio and said we may have a tire loose. Be ready. A one lap later, he said definitely, definitely a tire is loose. Isn't it funny how you get past and all of a sudden you have a loose tire? I, I, but that's how focused you are until you get past and then you realize, maybe I got a problem. Scott Speed down around the apron. Headed very slowly to pit road. And he will make it without incident. So Kane leads. Hamlin in second. And Kyle Busch one and a half seconds back now in third. Yeah, we're about 30 laps into this run. Denny Hammond thinking he may have a loose wheel since the last restart. Kane's going to lap Jeff Burton, whose car was damaged in the second caution of the day. Yeah, Burton had high hopes for today. He was yep. really good qualifying and practiced well. Had a good race car. He got torn up early. Scott Speed has gone to the garage where he will join Bobby Labonte, Michael McDowell, and Mike Bliss. Casey Kane, your leader. Hamlin, the Bush Brothers, and Jimmy Johnson, your top five. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. Rethink possible. 200.
100, three laps complete. Casey Kane is the first of 27 lead lap cars. Already the caution has flown four times. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch have led the most laps. And here's Kane working past what had been a, a ding-dong battle between David Stremme and Danica Patrick, but they give way to the race leader. And, and Mike, it's so much easier to drive your car around here on the top three. It doesn't take quite as much effort. The car's a little easier to drive up there. But when you got to go to the bottom, you're going to have to work your tail off to get by people. But now, consider the case of Denny Hamlin. He thinks the right rear wheel has a vibration, and it may not be completely tight. But he doesn't want to give up that track position to find out. No, because you make a green flag stop here, you're going to go at least two laps down, even up there running in the second spot, because of even though you only have to go down one pit road, but it's that 30 miles per hour pit road speed. And I think he really has to think that over because what was it, 30 odd laps into this run before he got started complaining. So I think he needs to think about that a little bit before he comes in, and I believe he is. The Bush brothers side by side. Kyle started on pole, went to the back with a speeding penalty, and has worked his way right back to the front when he and Kurt in the 78 fight it out for third. And Kurt pretty much using Josh Weiss in that 35 car as a pick, taking the position away from his brother Kyle Busch. Only 209 laps into this race. Todd Barrier and that 78 team has really got hurt a good race car today. Larry had a good race car last week at Phoenix and uh, or at uh, Vegas and had trouble. Yeah, they, they've been having a tough time closing the deal. Maybe today the day. Man, and won here five times. Those Bush boys know a little something about this racetrack. They, they study the transitions. I never heard that before, but I heard those two guys talking about the transitions in and off the turns. Jimmy Johnson going for fourth against Kyle Busch. Jeff Gordon looking on. I think Kyle Busch is now paying the price for going with just the two tires. I, I felt like it was a good call trying to get that track position back, but he would love to see the yellow flag wave, I think, because he is really losing some ground now. 38 laps to halfway in what looks like a long green flag run here at Bristol. We've had we've had some almost caution. We've had a whole bunch of almost caution, but everybody's been able to hang on. Nowhere to hide. That's the problem Josh Wise has right now in the 34. He and Stremme and Patrick battling, and here come the lead lap cars, and they're beginning to stack up right behind them. Yeah, and remember, once you lose your momentum, if you pull down and let people go, you're going to lose a lot more than just one spot. Yeah, we've got third through about tenth stacked up behind Danica Patrick and the other lap down car of David Reagan. That's where you got to have a car that you can get on that bottom and put that slide job on them or whatever it takes to get by them. You cannot let people hold you up very long here. That's where that pinup aggression and that's time good, release. Good for Kurt Busch because he's been good on the bottom all day. Here comes Jimmy Johnson on the bottom to clear the lap traffic. Not quite as good because his car has worked better in the top groove so far. Well, this is when you get in this little wad like this, this is when things, bad things happen. Three wide for a moment. Rush hour at Bristol. This is definitely a wad. There you see Matt Kenseth in the 20 car going on the outside of Kyle Busch. Kenseth trying to take advantage of Jimmy Johnson. They almost get three wide. The 30 of Stremme is the lap car. They're trying to work past. Now they are three wide. And Kenseth comes busting through. And uh, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, Greg Biffle, that whole crowd right there being held up by some of these lap cars. <laughs> it's like, come get a piece of this. Yeah. Catch me if you catch me. I know you can pass me. I'm not sure. Right now, Kurt Busch is the only car to clear this knot of lap traffic. Jimmy Johnson goes inside Danica and moves away, and Matt Kenseth's going to be the big winner on this one as he's now climbed up behind Johnson into fifth place in that number 20 Toyota. 220 laps complete. Casey Kane leads by 2.3. Two hundred thirty one laps complete. You see that Kurt Busch has passed Casey Kane, but not for the lead. Bush was running in fourth place when he had to pit. And he's now come back out with fresh tires and has got one of his laps back. 
that he lost there on pit road. You know, I was talking about the 24. He dive bombs these corners. He goes in on the bottom and just lets the thing wash up. Watch this pass he puts on Kyle Busch here. He goes in there. He just stands in the gas, dive bombs up to the top, makes the pass. He's not bashful with corner entrance speed, is he? No, sir. Steve, what happened that caused Kurt Busch to have to come to pit road? Mike, he ducked down to pit road on lap 223, just checked with the team. They said they feared they had a flat right rear tire they put on right sides on the number 78. Car to all turn four, four down, and it's Landon down, Castle. And we're back under caution for the fifth time. Seems they scraped some embers off the right side of that uh, camo. You know, a couple of drivers I think this will benefit will be Denny Hammer. Remember, he's been complaining about a vibration. Plus, Kyle Busch had fallen all the way back to ninth with those, those two tires from that last stop. I believe that 33 had a right front go down, guys. The thing just darted out into the wall there. I believe he had a right front go down. Jamie McMurray will get the free pass under this fifth caution of the day. Pit road open. A lot of takers, Matt. And you're on board with Jimmy Johnson now in his box. He stopped a little bit short in their box so they could have a, a better exit to get around the damaged 33 car. And Jimmy said his car was much better. Four tires on this. Meanwhile, the five of Casey Case is my car. A tick on the tight side, but not bad at all. I'm very pleased with how the race car really takes off after eight or nine laps, Krista. This is a huge break for Denny Hamlin having this caution. He had been hanging on to what he thought was a loose right rear wheel for the last 50 laps. He said, other than that, though, the car really feels good. He said, I'm feeling a little bit of grinding in the back. Just make sure we get these four tires on tight. Steve? First, of Kyle Busch just told his crew, man, I feel like I'm running qualifying laps here on every single lap. we got to do something to get this baby rolling. They've made a chassis adjustment. Also, four tires for Kyle Busch. There's the race off pit road. Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, uh, Matt Kenseth already out. Yeah, Casey Kane had some issues on the right front as well as Jeff Gordon. They had problems on the right rear. You'll see it right here. Gains and losses on pit road as we're under caution at Bristol. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Chevy Silverado, the one you depend on, the one that lasts. And by Olympus has fallen. When our flag falls, our nation will rise. Olympus has fallen. Starts Friday, rated R. Getting ready for the restart. Race leader Matt Kenseth elects the high groove. Long stop for Marcus Ambrose. He's the next to last car on the lead lap. Kirk Bush took the wave around to get back onto the lead lap. So we will restart with 23 lead lap cars. Kenseth, Johnson, Hamlin, Kane in fourth, Harvick, Biffle, Logano, Boyer, Gordon, and Earnhardt are the top 10 green flag waves. And Kenseth on the high side hauls them off turn number two with a good lead. Johnson establishes in second, side by side for third. Kane and Biffle up top. Hamlin on the bottom in the 11. Nice orderly restart. Cars in the garage. Rudiman, Speed, Bobby Labonte, McDowell, and Bliss. Five cars out of the race. Quapple and Castle also back in the garage area. Here comes Hamlin against Jimmy Johnson for second. You got one of the fifth behind you, no yellow. Casey Kane in that five. Eric Almirola in the 43 car. He's been in the wall. Now it looks like he has a tire going soft as he falls toward the back of the field to be able to get down to pit road. Came in here 10th in the points after three races this year. Almirola will make it to the pits. We stay green. He was running 13th. Watch the blue 43 outside of Stenhouse. Yeah, he just gets loose getting down in a the corner there and the back end comes around. That's usually happens after a pit stop. Maybe the air pressure a little low. Maybe they made some adjustments on the car. Driver wasn't ready for it. Got away from it. Yeah, maybe the low air pressure. We've been hearing it a lot this week. Maybe bottom out right there. 
Side by side for third, Kane, Johnson. And for fifth, Harvick and Biffle. We got to give a hat, tip of the hat to Biffle there. He has really driven himself right to the front. Yeah, it wasn't, but a little over 100 laps ago, he was sitting on pit road getting repairs. Everyone else stayed out on that caution. So Kenseth out the restart, leading now by seven tenths of a second. His teammate Hamlin in second. The Chevys of Johnson and Kane, third and fourth, and the Ford of Biffle, fifth. Chris? Mike, time for the AT&T mid-race report. Glad you're watching. Joe Gibbs racing, dominating the first half. Denny Hamlin and pole sitter Kyle Busch have led the most laps, and another caution has come out. Already more caution flags in this race uh, than all of the last year. Let's check in with Daryl Waltrip. You know, you got to be good to win at Bristol, but you got to have luck on your side, too. And I think that last caution, that saved Denny Hamlin. He had that loose wheel, got lucky, keep an eye on the 11. Talking about a fast car, Greg Biffle's riding in it. You remember he was almost in a crash on lap 55. He recovered from that. He stormed his way through the field, up inside the top five now. Look for Biff to be tough on the short track. You know, Michael Matt Kenseth started this race back in the 12th position, but he's been patiently being aggressive. Got that first win last week, and that crew's getting the job done on pit road, Steve. Well, Larry Kyle Busch got busted for speeding when the caution came out on lap 54. He restarted 32nd. He's fought his way back. As crew chief Dave Rogers said, thanks for your patience. He's trying to find his way back inside the top 10. Mike. Eric Alvarola just spun and crashed at turn four to bring out the sixth caution of the day. In the last 10 Bristol races, more than half of the caution flags have come in the second half of the race. Wait and see if this race, Chris, gets won or lost off pit road on a late caution. Thanks, Mike. We'll take a look at why we are under caution. Casey Kane, by the way, has led the second most laps today, has nine career wins from the front row. He started on the front row earlier today, and here is the Eric Almirola slide. And by the way, it's been 26 years since the points leader coming into Bristol won the Bristol race. Jimmy Johnson in position to do that. The last driver to do it was Dale Earnhardt. Jimmy's been steady all day, currently running third with the caution out, the sixth caution of the race. This has been the AT&T Mid-Race Report. It's cleanup time in Bristol, Tennessee, and into the second half in just a moment. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by KFC. Come in today and taste why fresh is better. Ralph Peer recorded the Bristol Session. That's known as the Big Bang of country music. The first recordings of country greats Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family, lending Bristol the name, birthplace of country music. Here's Jeff Hammond. Mike, I've listened to all the reports at the halfway point about who was good and who could do what. The main thing all these guys have got to do is eliminate mistakes, whether it's on pit road or on the racetrack. We've already seen six teams who've all been up to the front all day long make critical mistakes early in this race. This second half, if they expect to win, they better eliminate those mistakes. Thanks, Jeff. David Gilliland too fast entering the pits. He gets a penalty. Eric Almirola checked at the infield care center and released. For the restart, Matt Kenseth is your race leader. Now this will be interesting because when Hamlin was the race leader, he elected the bottom on the restart. He gets the bottom because Kenseth takes the top. Let's see who's first into turn one. As we go back to green, a lap 257, Hamlin doesn't go. It doesn't really matter if you don't go. Right. No, because he's lost second to Casey Kane in the five. And how about Kevin Harvick in that 29 on the outside of Hamlin? Those are the kind of restarts that can really mess up everybody. So they just pull the end back to the line that you're in. Well, you have one driver that really paid a price for that was Jeff Gordon in that 24 car because he was in the inside line that did not get going. And he's back to 12th place right now battling Stenhouse. The caution flag, a big break for Kurt Busch, who had stopped under caution 
for a tire and then took the wave around on the last restart. Now here's a look at the start. Hmm. Did Hamlin spin the tires, miss a shift, or something else? I, I think it's a combination. Hold on, I don't think he was ready when he realized they were going, he spun the tires. Hamlin battling. Kevin Harvick in the 29. This is for third. And how about Joey Logano with that 22 car? Here he's up there in the top five. Yeah, so is uh, Kevin Harvick. He's uh, got a nice run going, too. Talked to Childress this morning. He was really happy with their cars. How are you down there today, Krista? Well, just to give you an update, remember we said Kenny Hamlin thought he had a loose wheel on that last right. Rodney was correct. They said it was slight, but there was a little bit of wallowing in the lug nut opening, so he was correct. It was a little bit loose on the right rear. You know, Daryl, we talked about Joey Logano in the 22, but I've got to believe they have made a lot of adjustments to make Brad Keselowski in that two better. He's up at the top 10, Steve. Well, Larry Mack, he told Paul Wolf under caution, he said, I overdrove the car for the first 20 laps of that last run and paid for it the next 50 laps. I've made the brakes mad, and I also made the tires mad. Larry, I'm, I was so surprised when the two hasn't run any better than he has. All during practice, he had the best looking race car for long runs of anybody. And he's won two of the last three races here. You, you know, we're about 15 laps past halfway. The speeds that these guys are running here with this generation six car in the race that we've had, the bottom groove is working if you can pull that slide job. Jeff Gordon gained a spot. Battling for 10th place. Here's a look at it. Watch the 24. As his teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr., gets a little loose mid corner. And Jr. passes him right back. Matt? Mike Dale Earnhardt Jr. telling Steve Letarte the car, if anything, more on the tighter side. But what he was telling his spotter, TJ Majors, I need to have more information about where the other cars are running because there's so much rubber on the racetrack. It's similar to Martinsville. You really have to straddle that line of where there's all that rubber down to where there's a lot more fresh racetrack. It's a lot like running the dirt track up near the cushion. Yeah, you get rubber. Rubber builds up on top of a concrete racetrack, and you get these bumps. They're almost like speed bumps. When you hit them, it chatters your tires loose, and you can either push the nose or lose the rear. We're 269 laps into this race, and right now we're exactly like we were at Vegas last week with Matt Kenseth leading Casey Kane. And Matt Kenseth, he's almost taken Casey Kane's groove away from him. Kenseth got away on the restart. Lap after lap, Kane has been reeling him in. I've been watching the 17 with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He is wearing the wall out. He thinks he's at Eldora or somewhere. Rubbing the wall just about every lap, especially in three and four. And as he did, that allowed Kurt Busch to come right up alongside and try and storm his way back from the back of the pack. Kurt now up to 13 in the 78. And it wasn't that long ago he was on the verge of going a second lap down when he had to make that unscheduled stop. Taking the wave around was the right move for Kurt Busch. And here comes Keslowski, the series champ against the five-time champ, Jimmy Johnson. Boy, what a turnaround with that two car. That Thank thing looks like it did in practice. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, buddy. Let me by. Don't put up a big fight right now. When he said, thank you, Earl, uh, that's Jimmy Johnson's spotter, Earl Barbin, who said, hey, the two's coming. He's quicker. I imagine that's what he said. Maybe I give him a little room right now, race him back later. I imagine he said something like it. No. Could have been if you don't get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> Jeff Gordon, uh, Krista was telling us during the break, his car has been tight all day. So he's had uh, a little trouble getting down to the bottom of the racetrack and staying there. And he's found an old friend, Clint Boyer, in that 15 car. Not for long. NFL. Matt Kenseth leading Casey Kane as we pick up where we left off in Vegas last week. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Dodge Dart. Dodge, new rules by AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Subway, the official training restaurant of Carl Edwards and athletes everywhere.
287 laps complete. Matt Kenseth leading Casey Kane by eight tenths of a second. Kenseth trying to work the 99 of Carl Edwards. You're watching back from Carl's car as he's trying to keep from going two laps down. He got involved in the Jeff Burton crash earlier. What you do is you play a game of chicken. You get down under a guy and start up in front of him and dare him whether you're going to let me in or not. Like, watch Matt right here. I got to get up. I got to get up. Give me some room. Give me some room. Uh-uh, partner. You're going to have to earn it. Yeah, Carl Edwards is fighting hard to stay one lap down because we actually only have four drivers that's one lap down right now. I see, once you get right there, you can carry it on in there and slide right up in front of him, and now you've got the pass made. Right behind them, Harvick Logano, third place. Harvick had to lift for a lapped car, and Logano shot to the bottom, thought he might have a chance at the position. Yeah, a car I keep watching is Old Blue back here, the two-car Keselowski. That car is going someplace. He is making some time. Yeah, he's definitely faster than our top four drivers right now, about a 10. Works inside David Gilliland, who brushed the wall earlier, uh, knocking him three laps down. And what I've liked about Keselowski, he doesn't let anybody hold him up. I mean, he drives that thing in there and just drives right up in front of him and goes on. He's not uh, being hesitant at all. There's no question about what he's going to do. That's Terry Labonte in the 32, starting his 883rd cup race today, tying him for third on the all-time list with Dave Marcus. You know, think about Brad Keselowski, of course, our champion from last year. The way he has started this season, he has led a lap in the first three races and three top five finishes. And nobody else has. Yeah, and people, you know, question about Roger switching from Dodge to Ford. Of course, Dodge went away, but that was a great, great strategy move on Roger's part, I think. One thing about this joint, I can tell you, these long green flag runs, they take it out of you. It, it, it physically, mentally, and then you get a little irritated. The further in this race we go, the more people holding you up, the more people won't let you go, the harder it is to pass, the more that time released aggression is building up. Darryl, just looking at Kevin Harvick there. Now you're looking at Kyle Busch. Never get a rest here, do you? No, you don't. I mean, you know, we watch the gyro cam. You're in the turns. A lot of G-forces on this little racetrack, and they're constant. You're around here in 15 and a half seconds. Watch Jimmy. I mean, he's tugging on that steering. I know that looks like not a big deal, but he's tugging on that wheel. That car is hard to control at the speed we're running around here. He lifted his visor just to try to wipe the sweat. Now you see him put it back down. He almost didn't have time to even do it. He had to wait to the next straightaway to put it back down. That's taking a chance, letting go and doing something like that, I can tell you. Martin Truex in 14th. Dale Earnhardt Jr., one spot in front of him. Let's watch Jr. here and see how he's doing. He's got that... You know, somebody pointed out to me, I didn't know he was left-handed, but somebody said that that uh, maybe it's because he's left-handed that he moves his right hand the way he does. He's steering the car with his left and just using that right just to kind of rest on the wheel almost. Here's another of those log jams as uh, Jimmy Johnson busted through a couple of lap cars. Jeff Gordon closed. Greg Biffle, Clint Boyer, and Kyle Busch, the pole sitter. That is seventh through 11th position. All battling hard here with 198 laps to go. Right along now is when you call the old crew chief and say, uh, uh, how many more laps is there to go? Oh, a few. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you posted. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. oh, we're, we're one stop away from making it to the end. Oh, yeah, you're, you're doing good. You're doing good. Well, we are. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint. Right now, sixth place Denny Hamlin has the fastest lap of this race. Check out the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data for, from Sprint. No metering, no throttling, no overages while on the Sprint network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Oh, things jam up quickly in front of the leader when you're trying to stay on the lead lap. Well, that nine car has been in a lot of trouble today. 
Vickers and Ambrose the 55 and the 9 are the last two cars on the lead lap along with Casey Mears in the 13 they're trying to stay out in front of race leader Matt Kenseth in the number 20 Toyota. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some bugs. Well, Matt Kenseth was able to fight his way past Casey Mears, Brian Vickers, and Marcus Ambrose. Now he goes to work on Ricky Stenhouse, the 20th place car, and put Stenhouse one lap down. 182 laps to go. Kenseth with a one-second lead over Casey Kane. Kevin Harvick keeping it close. Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, the Penske Fords, fourth and fifth. With Hamlin, Biffle, Johnson, Gordon, and Boyer, uh, the top ten. I just keep watching that two-car, Mike, and he keeps reeling them in little bit by little bit. I like the way that thing looks now. They've got, his, they got the right handle on it now. The race leader, Matt Kenseth, it seems like he is perpetually in traffic. Now on the outside. Oh, car in the wall turned one hard. Dave Blaney. One in the fence in front of you. Rod the top right here. Rod the top. Seventh caution. And it comes out at lap 321. That was a hard hit for Dave Blaney. And Tommy Baldwin's number seven. He was running 15 on the lead lap. The ex sprint car champ had a great run going. And Daryl had had the look of a right front going down because that car never turned as it went off into the corner. I'd say you're right, Mike. I did, I did not see it, but you can see there the tires down. Of course, got a lot of damage up there as well, but most likely the way it shot into the wall, that's what happened. Yeah, there he goes. You can just see a dead right turn into the wall. That's the right front getting going down. You saw the caution out immediately for Blaney. Seventh caution of the day, and Matt Kenseth will lead everybody on to pit road. Matt? As they come down, the first car to hit their box will be the 29 of Kevin Harvick at the top of your screen. Harvick, his car started out so well, he was impressed with that. But they wanted to go back on an air pressure change that they used in the previous run to try to make that car better. Middle of your screen, Kenseth. This is halfway mark of that run. The car started to go back on the tight side. He's chasing his fourth back-to-back -back win. And meanwhile, Casey Kane started second, run second. He said the car just didn't cut as well as he needed to do. They were talking about besides an air pressure change, they even threw around a track bar change. Krista. A tight condition for Denny Hamlin is causing him to have to delay getting back on the throttle. How are they going to fix it? Rear carrier Heath Cherry making a track bar adjustment for tires, Steve. Brad Keselowski says that is the best this car has been all day. I need a little bit more help when I get on the throttle. Four tires and an air pressure adjustment in the right rear tire for the champion. Looks like the real gambler was Alan Gutzis and Jeff Gordon in that 24 car. 90 laps on their tires. Everyone went with four, except they tried two on that 24 car mm. of Jeff Gordon. I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. Gives him the track position he has not had all day. As Gordon will come out in the lead. Ricky Stenhouse free pass on that caution flag. You know, last week the, uh, the word of the race was loose. Not too many cars loose today. So here's what's fresh off the wire, brought to you by KFC. Tight, going back to throttle. Just sort of getting tight center right there, tight on exit. Little plane across the middle. Too tight. It's just tight, you know. It's better, but too tight. Feels like I'm on bowling balls. Just don't make me laugh too hard right now. <laughs> and that's what's fresh off the wire. And I think simply last week at Vegas, we heard loose, 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 which means the rear tires were not gripping. The back end was wanting to come around. I think a lot of that had to do with the weather change, how hot it was on Sunday. This is more typical Bristol. The push or tight, where the driver's turning the steering wheel, but the front tires are not responding. The more rubber that goes down, that's normally the case here at Bristol. I think if you look at the balance of this car, Larry, and what makes this car really driver friendly is that big rear spoiler, which will make your car tight and make the front want to push more. I'd, I'd rather have a car a little tight and I had to have it back in coming around. Now's your chance to join Fox Fantasy Auto Racing presented by Ford. Pick your team of five drivers each week. Compete for prizes all season long. Sign up today at foxsports.com slash fantasy. 
You know, Daryl, aside from the fact of 90 laps on the tires, the reason I like the four tire strategy there is we're going to have somewhere around 170 laps to go. Everyone will have to stop once, but if you stop late in the race, then that maybe puts you in a position where you can go with two tires to keep the track position. Yeah, I think what Jeff Gordon is saying, my car is tight in traffic. Maybe if I get this car out front in clean air, maybe it will be a lot better than it's been back in traffic. That's got to be what they're thinking. Wow, both Tommy Baldwin cars hit the wall. Dave Blaney brought up his caution and J.J. Yaley. Next week, California Dreaming. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing California style. Some people say the West Coast is the best coast. Tony Stewart is a man on a mission right now. I may have to agree. I know when you think about me, you think about Blitz and Glam. Ah, yeah. Don't miss it next week here on Fox. On show here, six different types of racetracks in the first six weeks of the season. And here at Bristol, it looks like these new Generation 6 Chevys, Fords, and Toyotas. Uh, have really put on a show. Yeah, I think you're, we, the best racing is getting ready to start. I mean, we've seen some close side-by-side -side racing, but these guys right now, the intensity level has just kicked up a couple of notches. Well, you're one pit stop away from the checkered flag here. Do you, you think of a four-hour drive in your passenger car on the highways. That last hour just always seems to go by pretty quickly. Here we go. We're back to green with Jeff Gordon on two fresh tires out in front. Yaley comes back on the track, stays on the bottom, won't be a factor as Logano is second. And they're side by side for third. Casey Kane in that five. His car has been pretty good on the bottom. He's trying to fight his way. Now he's fighting Denny Hamlin for that third spot. But you see just that little advantage that the leader of the race has on the restart. That gives him the advantage that Jeff Gordon has, and it slows down the outside, the inside guy just a little bit. That's what happened to Casey Kane. Big fight mid-pack, Kenseth, along with Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Guys, we saw on that last green flag run, early in the race, people couldn't get up high in the turns because that white area of the track was really slippery. That's all worked in now. There's a lot of grip up there. That's another groove that these guys can use. You talked about the intensity jacking up, Daryl. They're going to use more of the racetrack and it'll be two and three wide all the way to the finish. Yeah, and they're gonna use more of each other, too. Use up more of each other, too. Three wide for a moment. Kozlowski stuck in the middle, and Kenseth closes the hole between he and Biffle. Not gonna be three wide there, but they're fighting hard now with Dale Jr. going bottom to top. Truex right behind him, and Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, and Ryan Newman join this pack. What a dogfight here. While at the front, Joey Logano comes for the lead in his Roger Penske Ford. Steve. And Mike, his car isn't tight or loose. He says at the beginning of the run, his car starts out a little bit loose, but the longer he runs, the better that 22 gets. The most Joey's ever led in a cup race, 139 laps here last August when he finished a career Bristol best eight. Here's what he ought to, here's what he ought to be thinking, Joey Logano in the 22. I've got four, he's got two. I need to get by him sooner. I don't need to let him get my tires all heated up. Jeff Gordon, I need to get by him now. What his teammate say earlier? He made the car mad and the tires mad yep. by doing just that. And you, Logano settles in. Logano's got an advantage right now. He needs to take advantage of that. Well, he better take it because his ex-teammate from Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin, then at 11, you can see him coming to the picture. He's been running these top two down. Kind of at some point in here, you got to say, okay, okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I got to go, baby. And behind Hamlin, uh, here goes Logano again up against Jeff Gordon for the first spot. Gets up to the door and no more. Got to dive bomb him just like Jeff Gordon's been doing everybody. That's what Logano's going to have to do to get by. But yeah, two tires or four tires, one of Jeff Gordon's strong suits all day long has been riding up to the middle of the corner to the top side and getting that run off. And you might say, you know, there's still a hundred and some odd laps to go here. Uh, and you might say, well, it might be too early, but it's never too early to get in the lead. Jeff Gordon leading, Joey Logano second, Hamlin, Johnson, Kane.
We are under caution at Bristol. Joey Logano brought out the caution flag, and it was not pretty. Logano was battling Jeff Gordon for the lead. Gordon slipped up in turn two, and Logano got right alongside him, but could go no further. And coming off four, Logano jumps up in the groove right in front of Danny Hamlin, and wait for it, wait for it. Pow. What did we say when we were watching this? If he doesn't move Jeff Gordon, somebody's going to move him. That's exactly what happened with his ex-teammate from Joe Gibbs Racing, Denny Hamlin in the 11. But, Larry, you see that little tap and how, how absolutely on the edge these cars are? All right, we've had some pit stops under this caution. Krista? Clint Boyer has been strong all day. You see the team there working on the tail. They're trying to sign between two and four tires. They did go with four. Steve? Brad Keselowski off the jack stand. Krista, he says, I'm okay. I just didn't restart well the last time. The, the uh, strategy for him, they said if we pit now, we might be able to make it all the way. Thanks, Steve. There's the damage to Joey Logano's car. Spoilers intact. Trying to get things tied down and not lose another lap. But I think based on what Steve just said, I totally agree. 150 laps to go, few cautions, which we'll probably have plenty. You can make it from here. One more look at the reason for the eighth caution of the day. From Denny Hamlin's bumper cam. Bump. Run. Lightly, slightly, but not politely. Caution is out, man. Among the cars that pitted was Dale Jr., Matt. And Junior Hip Hit Road, they're trying to fix the, the tight in the race car. Once again, more adjustments, two adjustments the last stop, and two on this one, right side tires. Meanwhile, though, the bigger picture with Steve Letarte and Dale Jr. going back and forth on the mat. They're about 10 laps shy of making it uh, on fuel. But the way Stevie looks at the history and trends of this racetrack, they feel like you're going to get some cautions. And then where will that put them, track position-wise, up near the front? Oh, I doubt we're done with caution flags. And I was just watching Dale Jr. And this is what you do under a caution. This is a good timing right here. You stretch your legs out. You get all those kinks out. Try to get yourself loosened up here a little bit for this last charge. Fox Sports is proud to team with Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks that helps feed more than 37 million people in America each year through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Visit feedingamerica.com slash Fox Sports to learn how you can fight hunger in your community. Together, we're Feeding America. Getting ready to restart. Mike, our top 11 drivers stayed out that time. Everyone else on the lead lap pitted about seven or eight of them. So that leaves Jeff Gordon on the high side and Denny Hamlin on the bottom to contest the lead. There is the restart box at turn four. Gordon on the throttle. Leads Hamlin off into one, but Denny likes the bottom. Whoa, 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 he might have a tire down. He may have a left rear tire down. No, I guess it just built up, Larry. Look at these guys, though. Three wide off turn four. Kyle Busch hugs the bottom against Harvick, and now Kurt Busch and Keselowski. I think what we, uh, we kind of speculated on the 24, two tires there a bit ago, give me track position, get out front. So far, it's worked. And for the first time today, Jeff Gordon can run the bottom of the racetrack as behind him, Payne and Kenseth for second. Yeah, Matt Kenseth, that group had a little bit of a bad pit stop that last time on pit road, and he's been fighting his way back up there to third. Oh, she's getting look like old Bristol down here in number one and two now. All over the place. Cars everywhere. Hamlin's faded to seventh, continuing to drop back. Harvick trying to take advantage. And Kurt Busch. Darrell, I think they went ahead and put the full button on time release aggression. I think it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, it looks that way, Larry. On that last restart, let's ride with Jimmy Johnson and show you what happened from the view of the low Chevy.
Hamlin slid it off the corner and paid the price. Yeah, he just didn't have his tires cleaned up well enough. I guess there's a problem. I thought maybe he had a flat there for a second, but uh, just dirty tires. How about old Kurt Busch in that 78 car? He has fought and clawed his way back to the top 10 after having to make an unscheduled green flag stop. Took the wave around. Here he is up in the ninth position. What he needs to hope is he can close the deal. This car, Kurt, they always seem to run really, really well to right up to the end. Kurt Busch. You know, Larry, drivers seem to complain more in the last hundred or so laps of the race. You get tired, you get tired of fighting the car, things that are wrong with it really start to exemplify themselves. You know, I think one thing that indicates that probably these guys decided to ramp it up a notch, we've got a few drivers like Johnson, Biffle, and Boyer just ran their fastest lap of the race. 137 laps to go at Bristol. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by the 2013 for Super Duty, built for tough. Time for an AT&T race break, brought to you by the nation's largest 4G LTE network with Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers at 126 laps to go. And there is Jeff Gordon, who's won five times at Bristol. But he's gone winless here the last 20 trips. How about the tire strategy? Yeah, nearly 100 laps on his left side tires when they came to pit road. That crew chief team decided they would just put rights on him. I know it's got a lot of other crew chiefs along pit road thinking, wow, that worked. How that will play into the strategy later in the race will be interesting. And Brad Keselowski, the reigning champ, he's won two of the last three races in Bristol, currently ninth. And you heard him talk about with crew chief Paul Wolf. We can make it the rest of the way. We know they're gamblers. But you know, Chris, I don't see that happening. The longest green flag run we've had is 78 laps and that ended with a blown tire the second longest 65 same result somebody broke blew a tire i don't see these guys going all the way to finish on these same tires it'd be a risky move for sure denny hamlin has led the most laps today 117 but he tangled with joey logano who was up near the front with jeff gordon and now is currently 18th you think logano might be thinking payback especially in place like bristol well you know the guys up top said you just hope someone gives you a break joey pulled in front of denny denny decided to not give him a break you take a chance anytime you cut somebody off that they might not let you have that spot. And Matt Kenseth in second place now in front of Casey Kane and behind Jeff Gordon. Kenseth trying for the fourth time in his amazing career, a former champion and two-time Daytona 500 champ, to win back-to-back -back races for the fourth time. Oh, man, I like the way this car looks. Matt Kenseth is so cool. He's not going to get it in a bind. He's going to, like Daryl said earlier, ride in the rocking chair, keep himself safe. He's gotten around the five car, and now he's going to stretch his legs and go after the 24 of Jeff Gordon. You talked about Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano after that incident. Let's uh, listen in a little on the radio transmission from the two drivers and their teams. Being out there belong out here. Yeah, that's the living car when I get to it. We'll get it back. We still have a lead lap, baby. Still have a lead lap. Keep digging. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to wreck them. Denny apologizing. Is it? Is that enough from Denny uh, to be apologetic? I don't think Joey heard him. <laughs> Maybe he'll get the word, though. You know, I like these new cars, though, these Gen 6 cars. We talked about how much downforce they have and how fast they are. Look at Logano. He tore the bike off of his, and look at him dive down in the corner. Still a lot of speed in that car. Speaking of speed, if you think you know something about speed, buckle up and play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge. Simply call Star Star Fast from your mobile phone and predict who will have the fastest time in today's race. It's all brought to you by the nation's fastest 4 g LTE network, AT&T. Rethink possible. This has been an AT&T race break. And Mike, we've already had 12 lead changes. One more equals the lead change total for all of last year in this race. Very competitive event here, Chris. And wasn't it right after Phoenix that Joey Logano and Denny Hamlin got into a war of words on Twitter about on-track deportment? I think it was. But if Joey Logano had a driven with the aggression and the anger that he has now after that spin, he would have gotten by Jeff Gordon and gone on and would have gotten spun out. He's making some great moves right now coming back up through the field. And he's not taking any time messing with anybody now. Now, when he was behind the 27 of Menard, who you see here, and Dale Jr., there was a bit of contact uh, between the two Chevys here. Close quarters. 
Earlier we saw Jamie McMurray spinning out of third place into the turn four wall, but he's back in it. Logano just going past him. Uh, they're both both still in the top 15 despite having a couple of excursions into the wall. Like as long as Logano is looking for that 11 car, he's going to go somewhere. Matt Kenseth stalking the lead from Jeff Gordon with 111 laps to go. Crash in the ninth caution of the day. Jeff Gordon in turns three and four appeared to lose a right front tire, and Matt Kenseth drove right under him. Yes, he did. I think you'll see Gordon blows. I don't know if he blows a right front tire. I think that's what happened because the car just, he goes in, he does that dive bomb thing, and then right here you see the car just takes off. Matt was great big run on the outside and drove right up on the back of him. And we are here and at the right front blue, but it's almost like something was starting to go wrong because Kenseth caught him in a hurry in one and two. The handling was going away, Larry. You could see him have to ease off it going into the corner multiple times, and then this right there. Yeah, she just turns, and here comes Matt. Matt had a full head of steam, nowhere to go. So that takes out our first and second place cars, two good race cars. I think it to Kane and Jimmy Johnson will end up being our leaders. What we say at the top of the show, you can run, but you can't hide at this half-mile racetrack. Cars torn up big time, man. The right front ought to be probably pushed all the way over to the engine. And it doesn't look half as bad as Kenseth's car. Kenseth just the uh, whole nose of his is gone. Both drivers appear to be okay. The pit road is still going to be closed because of his car down there on the apron in one and two. This really gives these drivers and crew chiefs on the racetrack time to think about what they want to do here because you could make it from here. Jeff Gordon staying in the car, hoping they can make repairs. Kenseth was likely only a lap or two away from taking the lead. As the handling was starting to go away on Gordon's car, was the tire going soft? We don't know. But the end result is the two lead cars are knocked out of this race in an instant. Krista. Mike, based on my math, it was right side tires that had been on Jeff's car the longest. He made a left tire change when they back on lap 238 or on 323. So on 236, that was the last time they made a four tire change, meaning those right side tires, by my math, had 154 laps on them. Oh, my goodness. Look at Matt Kenseth's car. And we listened in on Jeff Gordon's team. Oh, oh, oh. We got a flat tire and hit the wall, boys. That's for you, all right? Yeah, do we take out Matt? Yeah. That sucks. Sorry, boys. Yeah, that first voice was spotter Eddie DeHaan. And then you heard Jeff Gordon concerned for Matt Kenseth. Just like that, two cars battling for the lead. And now both are in the garage. Yeah, and I mean, you're just driving along. Jeff Gordon was. I'm sure they had a good strategy all planned. Uh, what they were going to do on tires. He'd been leading the race in good shape, and then bam, you're in the garage with a wrecked car. You know, back to this strategy, I would not be a bit surprised to see possibly drivers like Clint Boyer, Brad Keselowski, maybe even Dale Earnhardt Jr. maybe stay out. Remember, they pitted thinking that they could make it to the end, and we're going to have less than 100 laps to go when we restart this race. Yeah, 18 cars on the lead lap. Under caution, let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint. Denny Hamlin's led the most laps today, and you'll get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. No metering, no throttling, no overages on the Sprint network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Jeff Burton had made another pit stop as they tried to recover from damage back on the caution at lap 54. And pushing his car uh, back onto the racetrack after spending a lot of time in the garage. Here's one more look and you'll see, watch the hood pop up as the tire goes and then Gordon's car goes to the wall. There. Worst place, I mean, almost right dead in the middle of the corner. Yeah, and Matt Kenseth, I mean, he's got a full head of steam and drives right up on the back of Jeff's car. That's a, that's unfortunate. Bro. Two great cars, two great drivers. 
Remember, the bumpers on these Generation 6 cars do not line up front to rear. That was a design intent to prevent the bump drafting that used to prevail at Daytona and Talladega. And now uh, Jeff Gordon has climbed out of his number 24 after he was hoping to win his 16th short track race. It's been 43 races since he has done so at Martinsville, Virginia, since Jeff's been to victory lane at a short track. Well, you know what? With, with the higher speeds, I mean, we're flying around. We're still running the 15-second bracket all day long. With the higher speeds comes a lot of things. It can come part failures, engine failures, tire failures. Those are things that we're going to learn with this new car. How much can we lean on it and what's going to break? So, Larry, when they open pit road, seeing what's happened now to several cars on long runs after two tire changes, do you dare take two? Well, I think we're going to see a, possibly some drivers like I spoke. That maybe we'll stay out because I don't think we're anywhere close to being finished with cautions, especially in uh -uh. the last 100 laps of this uh -uh. race. Pits are open. Matt? Jimmy Johnson already in. Chad Canals told Jimmy, take it easy in your tires. We're going to go left side tires. Meanwhile, the 29 of Kevin Harkison, left side tires as well. He was losing a lot of grip. And the big five, Casey Kane, service already complete. A couple different adjustments. These guys, Kristen, know more than likely this could be the last time they hit pit road. Denny Hamlin in saying his car is not bad, just tight. Denny Hamlin pits for four. Brad Keselowski, Paul Menard, and Ricky Stenhouse did not pit as Kyle Busch. Joey Logano, Kurt Busch come in for service down at the far end of the front stretch pits. Casey Kane wins the race off pit road, but he'll be no better than fourth when we go back to green. Big crash at Bristol. The leaders crash out of the race. Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth. Everybody okay? We're under caution. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. Millions of fans, one family. Only Sprint can feed them all. Join the family at Sprint.com slash speed. Under caution, 100 laps to go. Brad Keselowski and Paul Menard and Ricky Stenhouse stayed out. They are the leaders. Usually at Bristol, it's the tempers that overheat. But look at that steam rising from Denny Hamlin's car. Yeah, I don't have a good feeling about that. Down to Krista. With Jeff Gordon, who had 154 laps on those right side tires, but you had a tight race car. You made the strategy to get the clean air. Was that the right call? Well, we also wanted left sides because we heard left sides were making, helping the cars turn. We saw some other guys do that, and it definitely did that. Uh, the car was really good out front there on the restarts and got clean air, and we're uh, setting sail. The, the right fronts never blow out when you're up against the wall. I dove down to the bottom to pass the 32 car. As soon as I got into the banking, I felt the right front go. I really hate that we collected Matt Kenseth in that. He had a great car. He was coming. It's just a matter of time before he got us. But a great, great effort and day uh, up until then for this drive-in hunger Chevrolet. So proud of that. And we needed points. This is definitely uh, not going to get us many. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, I'm down here with Matt Kenseth. And Matt, first and foremost, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, Jeff said he was sorry it happened, but he, he blew a right front tire. Good. From your viewpoint, what did you do that? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot either one of us can do about that, so it's going to take a lot of Husky tools to, to fix that thing. But um, really encouraged. Jason made awesome adjustments. Again, I thought we had that run, the, the fastest car, one of the only cars I could pass out there today. And, uh, man, we just got a little behind, and I just finally had it made up and wanted to be in the lead for that last pit stop, you know, so we could get ourselves some track position there. And um, blew a tire right in front of us. Just nowhere to go. So we had a great car again today. We just uh, didn't make it to the end, unfortunately. Thank you. Last August, Kenseth was in a wreck with Tony Stewart battling for the lead. He finished 25th then. Ready for the restart. Keslowski, Menard, and the 17, Stenhouse, did not pit. But here comes Casey Kane on the outside on fresh tires. Yeah, he's one of 10 drivers that went with just two tires. Clint Boyer back in 14th, the first driver with four. Boy, look at that 27, Larry. I mean, he's uh, he's got a pretty good-looking car. He was good early in the race, hadn't heard much out of him, but here he is now, late in the day challenging for the lead. Paul Menard has only three top tens on NASCAR's Sprint Cup short tracks. They've all come right here. And in the last four Bristol races, three wide, Jimmy Johnson Woo! and Kyle Busch make a sandwich out of Stenhouse. You know, Stenhouse did a great job right there. He held his line, and they went by on both sides. I know he didn't like it, but that was the right thing to do. A little further back, same song, second verse with Harvick. 
inside of Ambrose and stuck in the middle there was Vickers. Man, hard, hard action here on these restarts. You can just get to, you know, you never could get three wide here in the past. Now you can get three wide and make it stick. Kane and Hamlin fight for third. Behind Keslowski and Menard. The Brett Keslowski has pulled out over a half a second lead just in about five or six laps since that restart. We listened in on the decision by team number two not to pit. I'm assuming you want to stay out here. Yeah, I mean, we're still going to need a few more than these caution laps here to make it, but I think the probability is pretty good. The pace he's running right now, he just ran his fastest lap of the race four laps ago. He's not conserving fuel while he's out there leading, that's for sure. And then, Larry, they, the guys study what we call trends. They kind of know what the trends are, and he's right about one thing. They've probably not had our last caution. Now, we were concerned about that steam rising from the right side of Denny Hamlin's hood. We're shutting it off, help cool it. No, it'll help cool it a little bit, but you can't do that with the oil deal. Just make sure you stay clear of the car in front of you. Get the cleanest air you can there. Trying to keep Hamlin's engine cool to make it another 90 laps. Sometimes you ride around under caution, and they will get a little warm once you get going again, but this place is really bad about being so close to other cars, you can't ever get any air to it. Yeah, because you're, you're only running 35 miles per hour when you're out there behind the pace car, so there's not a lot of air going through that front end opening. Joey Logano, after getting turned into the wall in turn two by Denny Hamlin, they have taped that car together. I think it's gotten faster. It, it, listen, ever since he got spun That's out, he's been driving. He's been driving, I mean, like crazy, Jeff. Larry, think about this. I'm down here at turn three, and I'm looking up very close to the wall. We're talking about Denny Hamlin's problem. Think Darlington, buddy. They got a lot of rubber on this racetrack. Real fine rubber. I'm wondering, maybe if he's got too much of that radiator, maybe if he stopped up this little bit, causing his heating problem. I, I guarantee that could be it Jeff there's no question whatsoever but back to Joey Logano I think he's got two things on his mind <laughs> get back to the front and his old teammate Denny Hamlin yeah he's got one and one on his mind what he's got Paul Menard's given up a few spots as now Jimmy Johnson goes after him and he goes back after Jimmy back and forth with 84 laps to go in Thunder Valley We welcome you back live here in Bristol, Tennessee, and that's the reigning NASCAR champ of the two car, Brad Kozlowski, leading Casey Kane in the five, and the two are going at it with just 74 laps to go. And we talked about after Vegas, Casey Kane getting beat with the fastest car, how hungry he would be when he got to Bristol, and look at him, he's chewing all over the back of that two car. Casey is strong. The driver to win this race in consecutive years going back, Rusty Wallace in the, in the number two, Roger Penske four, that was in 99 and 2000. That that uh, number two car iconic here at Bristol and Keselowski trying to make it stand Mike Joy. Here comes Kane on the bottom. Keselowski's got to give him room. Ford, Chevy, Toyota, one, two, three with Hamlin third. And Kane back in line after a stab at the lead. Yeah, well, while these two guys are racing each other and Kane better get on by in a hurry here because the 11 is catching them back up. Behind the 11, pole sitter Kyle Busch bringing Jimmy Johnson and Link Boyer with him. Steve. Mike, the two teams gambled that they could make it the rest of the way without having to stop for fuel and for a while. Brad Keselowski says, I'm saving fuel, but that plan has gone out the window as he tries to fend off game. You know, the driver, I'm gonna keep an eye on here with about 70 laps to go. Clint Boyer in that 15 car. Remember, four tires on that last pit stop, and he has definitely been picking them up and laying them down. Krista. Hey, Larry Mack, that was his call to come in. They thought they could make it the distance uh, on fuel because they pitted back on lap 350. The Clint said, nope, I want four more. The guy I'm watching is the guy in that 22 car. <laughs> he is driving with it. I mean, he is an angry man, and he's looking for that 11. And it's four cars in front of him. For the lead, Casey Kane back downstairs. 
Keselowski likes that high groove. That's where his car runs best at this stage in the race. And you see the drive. Keselowski gets off the corner. Just hard to make it stick down there. The guy's got to give you a little bit of room, and Brad has not given up anything. Casey is so much faster right through the middle. Right there is where he's really so much faster than the try the outside. Oh, baby. Tried to force the issue on the high side. Keselowski said nothing up there. I think Brad's baiting him up a little bit, giving him just enough room to look to the outside, but not enough room to pass. Darrell, with this big seven-inch high spoiler on the back of the car, it's got to be hard to mirror drive. Uh, yeah, but, you, you know, I always talk about track presence. You know exactly. Brad Kezasi knows exactly where Casey Kane is. He can feel him back there. And he might really get the feeling him here in a second. Kane, top to bottom. He dove to the inside. Yeah, I think he like might that. can pull that slide job he this might. time. Maybe. 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 Nope. No. And Call Hamlin. Maybe. Hamlin gets closer as these two battle side by side for the lead. Oh, everybody's getting closer. Here comes Kyle Busch. Here comes Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, and Joey Logano. Company's coming. And you know what else is getting closer? The back of the pack, a ton of drivers that will be fighting to stay on the lead lap. That's probably a good thing for the leader. He can work that traffic. So it's a three-car battle for the lead. With Kyle Busch not far behind. Oh, that's really, really, this is tightening up the whole front of the field. Denny Hamlin is right there as we come to 60 laps to go next time by. Kane is just going to have to do, Larry, he's going to have to rough Keselowski up or he's going to have to put a dive bomb on him. He's going to have to do something to get around him. Yeah, because not only Denny Hamlin in the 11 there, our pole sitter Kyle Busch, the 18, he's getting closer. 60 laps to go. Six cars lined up to chase the leader, Brad Keselowski. Here's the situation right now with 50 laps to go. Keselowski's out in front of Casey Kane by seven-tenths of a second, but it hasn't been easy. The fast got kind of furious here. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know what happened here. The two kind of pulled down, gave them five to the outside. I thought, okay, this race is over with Casey. And long gone. And Brad held his ground hard on the inside, and then traffic came into play. Kane took the lead. But could not hold it. He comes up against Terry Labonte. Lost his momentum. Labonte up in the high groove. Keselowski downstairs retakes the lead. We thought lap cars would pay a pay a price in this, but right here it was almost disastrous. That is a that was a car that was gone, and Casey hung on to it, but it cost him a ton of time. And then third place changed hands with Kyle Busch. 48 in the wall, guys. Yeah, turn four, Derek. And you heard it from Jimmy. Blew a tire. Tenth caution flag of the day. That's the one Brad Kozlowski wanted to see to try to make it to the end without stopping. We'll see if he does with 45 laps to go. I'm not sure he wanted to see that cost. No, I don't either. <laughs> he, he gapped uh, Casey just a yeah. little bit. Let's see what happens here to Jimmy. stop of the 48 of, of Jimmy Johnson they went with two tires laps yeah everybody somewhat, did. somewhat mirrors what his teammate Jeff Gordon and Alan Gustafson did earlier exactly everybody's been changing lefts and uh, I think we needed to take a look at these rights uh, from what we've seen here last couple of runs Johnson had top 10 finishes in seven of the last eight Bristol races including one win so he bounces off the wall cuts a right front continues and he's trying to make his way back to pit road. Pits are open. Kurt Busch in along with Newman, Bernhardt Jr. and others. 44 laps to go.
millions of fans, one family. It takes truly unlimited data to feed a family this large. Get in. Coca-Cola Racing Family Road Trip. 99 bottles of Coke on the wall. 99 bottles of Coke. You got a left, then another left, and make a left after that one. Yeah! Oh, taught her everything she knows. Are we there yet? Let's go places. Not just the ones you can find on a map, but the ones you can find in your heart. Because inspiration doesn't favor those who sit still. It dances with the daring and rewards the courageous with ideas. Ideas that inspire. Ideas that take you places you never imagined. Ideas big enough to make the heart skip a beat. And in some cases, maybe two. Toyota, let's go places. As everybody knows, whenever Carl Edwards wins a race, he does his patented backflip. You ready? Get down. I got this. <sighs> Whatever. Okay, Carl. This is for you, racing boy. Hey! Subway keeps Carl Edwards' engine racing with his low-fat, protein-powered favorite, the Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki, made exactly the way he says, with spinach, green peppers, and black olives. I'm gonna jump off the car. Finishing up after the 10th caution of the day, 41 laps to go in Bristol. Brad Keselowski did not stop, nor did the nine cars directly behind him. Half of the lead lap cars did come to pit road. 20 lead lap cars, 10 didn't, 10 did. I might be watching a lot of things, but I'm watching that black car and that yellow car. I believe that 22 has not forgotten what happened. Getting a report that actually Jimmy Johnson melted the bead on that right front tire. That's not the first time we've heard of that. Five cars have had right front tire trouble today, all of them Chevrolets. Ready to go green. Have we seen the final pit stop and caution flag of the day? Nope. 40 to go. Green flag, Keselowski oh, oh, spins Kane. the tires. Here comes Kane. Kane, anybody, th nobody in that outside line could go. Keep an eye on that 15 car, Clint Boyer. Remember, four fresh tires versus everybody else with just two fresh tires on the last time to pit road. And for the lead from pole to penalty to coming right back is Kyle Busch in the 18. Boys, this is going to get ugly. It's going to be fun to watch, but I think I might get a little ugly here. This is some aggressive hounds right here in the front right now. Top three ran three distinct different lines through three and four that time. Larry Keselowski, he couldn't even get going. He was spinning a tire so bad. I've been worried about that camera in the rear tires and how that was going to affect some of these short tracks, particularly on restarts. Now, can Keselowski reclaim the lead? First, he's got to deal with Kyle Busch. It's a pretty determined young man, but of course, I thought it would be the Brad and Kyle show today in case he got in there and is uh, right in the middle of it. And by the way, Hamlin got way away from Joey Logano by about three cars. That was wise. Kyle Busch in the 18 clears Keselowski in that two again. Chevy Toyota Ford, 35 laps to go at the strike. Based on what I've seen out of that five car, Larry, I think he can kind of, like we said last week, this week he can mind the gap. I believe he's good enough. Let's go back to the restart. Where clearly, Keselowski spins the tires here. Yeah, he can't even get going. And now I think the 11 car got him all jacked up. And he really couldn't get going. Yeah, it stacked everybody up in that outside line. Brad Keselowski in that two, he's making that bottom groove work, but he really had to get out of it then down the back straightaway. Yeah, you get so loose, uh, you got to push Debris loose. down the front stretch. They didn't say where. Now Boyer to the bottom. <laughs> down to the basement trying to get Keselowski. Now remember, Boyer's an old dirt track driver. He understands how to do a slide job, and he ain't afraid to do it.
There's the gap. First to the battle for second. Behind them, Dale Jr. battling Menard for about seven, and Kurt Busch has fought his way back to the top ten. Now Dale Earnhardt Jr., as well as Kurt Busch, they were on pit road that last caution for tires. Sixth and seventh place here. Menard and Jr. This battle right here, this is, a, this is interesting. I think Boyer is sitting here saying, you know, I'm not so sure those two aren't going to make a little contact here. I want to be in a good spot when they do. Boy, you know, you've been running here. You've been 472 laps, and your tongue's hanging out. And you're in the fight of your life, trying to pass somebody to get another position. Boy, the run Kyle Busch got that time, though, through the high line off we'll turn one and two. That will prevail every time, it looks like. 27 laps to go. Race leader Casey Kane pulling away from this three-car battle for a second. We've had 10 caution flags. The most devastating one at lap 389 when race leader Jeff Gordon cut a tire and swallowed up the number 20 of Matt Kenseth, who was right behind him. The first and second place cars knocked out in an instant. It's been that kind of day here in Bristol. Well, Casey Kane had a fast car last week, got beat by Matt Kenseth. The way he's driving today, the way that car looks, he's going to get his redemption today. Kane alone, 1.3 seconds ahead of Kyle Busch, who has had quite a comeback today. Yeah, and Casey Kane in the five has a pretty clean racetrack in front of him right now with 23 to go. I think Brad's going to have to lean on the 18 there of Kyle Busch if he wants to get by him. They're running exactly the same speed, pretty much in the same line. I think that's what Boyer's uh, thinking as well. He's sitting there kind of watching these two. Yeah, that last time off too, Brad Keselowski and the two got pretty loose and had to back out, back out of the throttle. I believe Keselowski thinks if I could get back around Kyle Busch in the 18, he thinks he could probably chase down the five of Casey Kamen. I'm not sure. Eighth Bam. place, Ryan Newman's been coming hard after Paul Menard. He's caught Menard. Couldn't quite make the pass that time. And here's our sprint, 20 to go. With Casey Kane in the lead, 10 caution flags for 65 laps. All the Gibbs cars uh, have led today. Casey Kane with 14 career wins. Only one of them has come on a short track. 2005 in Bristol, his first career win was on a short track. None since. That 78 car, Larry, he's had a great day. Just get this, bring this thing home. He's running in the top five. Looks to me like uh, the 11 car is fading quite a bit here. Well, remember, he has much older tires than Kurt Busch in the 78 and now Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88. I think those fresh tires are definitely prevailing late in the race. And then from Newman on back in eighth, Menard ninth, Vickers tenth, Greg Biffle, Jamie McMurray, and Martin Truex. All together as uh, Hamlin and Earnhardt battle for sixth. Keslowski alongside Kyle Busch coming out of turn four on the left of your screen for second place. I just keep getting, I just have this feeling there's gonna be some contact between the 18 and the two before we get to the end of this thing. They're just not necessarily intentional. Brad is trying so hard to get down under the 18 of Kyle Busch, he gets loose and I'm afraid that's gonna hurt him, uh, maybe even get him into it. Well, I know who's gonna join that second through fourth real quick. We just spoke about him, Kurt Busch, that 78. He has run him down about a half a straightaway in a couple of laps with those fresher tires. And he will not be bashful about getting on by. No, but he will not. This is where Kurt really needs to focus, so he needs to close this deal out. He's running a top five. Don't do anything that's going to take you out of the race. Keslowski that time was sideways off turn two, halfway down the straightaway. Now he makes another bid to retake second place. Can't quite get there, but he's working on him. So close, so close. Fighting hard with 13 laps to go for second. Now a look in his mirror, Clint Boyer's there, and so is Kurt Busch. 
Yeah, Kurt Busch is so much faster than all three of these guys. I think Kurt maybe will be able to turn it to the bottom of those fresher tires if he needs to. Oh, I think he will, Larry. I think he'll go right down to the bottom and try to pass him. If I read his Twitter feed correctly, Kurt Busch in the 78 flew up to Indianapolis last night for the Supercross. He's doing some high flying of his own today. Well, this great run for that furniture to the company, the team and Todd Barrier and the whole group. I'd like to see them close this deal out. They seem to always have bad luck the last few laps. Here goes the two again. Got a nice run. But can he get the drive off the corner that Kyle Busch can? Almost. He might be able to do it in turns one and two. He seems to get through the middle of this turn a little wee bit better. No, it gets loose up off. He's working on him. He gained a little that time, Daryl. And there's Kurt Busch, though, in that 78 car. Much faster than these two guys. Denny Hamlin's been into the wall. And Hamlin against the wall again in turn one. And drifting back in the pack. Yeah, in trouble. I think he's got some damage to the right side quite a bit. And the car won't turn. He's just bouncing it off the wall. Seven laps to go. Hamlin just trying to hang on now. Yeah, I don't see him being able to hang on. He's just using the wall to stay in the racetrack. Yeah, he's bent the suspension, Larry, and the car won't turn. He's just sliding it off the wall. Trying to bring it home, but I don't know if he's going to make it or not. And here comes the leader. Casey Kane closing in on him. We'll take the bottom. Oh. Hamlin in the wall again. And here comes second place. Third and fourth side by side. Boy. Keselowski and Kurt Busch. Yeah, Kurt Busch turned that thing down to the inside, but Keselowski had to go low to dodge Hamlin. Hamlin trying to maintain at least minimum speed to finish these final four laps. Boy, he's, he's just, it's like a slot car. Got up against the wall and just keep bouncing off and going. Casey Kane, 1.8 ahead of Kyle Busch. Boy, if we make it to, no, if we get to the end of this thing, it's going to be hard. I've seen people bouncing off the wall, off each other. NASCAR I, telling the 11, pick up your speed. You're below minimum speed. We'll black flag you if you don't. Two to go. Boy, he, he, he needs to pick up the speed. Danica Patrick, the 10, almost just ran all over Denny Hamlin. Hamlin may not make it around. Right front going down. Final lap for Casey Kane. Just bring it on home here. Sails nice. it off into turn three. Gets underneath Joey Logano. And Casey Kane wins the Food City 500 at Bristol. Nice job. Yeah. Good job, guys. Awesome job. Good job, Kevin. Way to go, boys. Way to go. That's a big accomplishment for us today. Kane beats Kyle Busch, the pole sitter, by 1.7 seconds. Chevy, Toyota, Ford, the first three, with Keselowski third, edging Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer. We knew this young man was going to be a force to reckon with this year. You think about it, finished way back here last year after this race was 32nd in the points. Second last week, victory lane this week for Casey Kane whose last win came 20 races ago at New Hampshire last July. Four races in 2013, four very different racetracks, and four winners. For car owner Rick Hendrick, that's win number 211. And his 10th at Bristol, tying Penske and Roush. Fenway for the most wins by active teams. Melting them down, Larry. Very nice. Kurt Busch picked up his, only his second top five in the last 45 races. Great run for Kurt. Yeah, great job by the 78 team today. Good job. 17 cars finished on the lead lap in Thunder Valley today, led by Casey Kane. Live at Bristol, Tennessee, moments ago, post-race, that's Joey Logano, a member who got bumped by Denny Hamlin going over to Hamlin's car and wanting to talk with Denny about it. You see the crew from 
the Joe Gibbs team. They were former Joe Gibbs racing teammates. And Michael Waltrip, you said that Logano wouldn't take the apology over the radio lightly, and the pushing is coming to shoving here. Yeah, and we can see what happened. Joey Logano pulled up in front of Denny. Denny said, I'm not giving you a break, Joey, and punts him when he gets down to turn one and two, spins Joey around, and uh, tempers flared after the race. Hamlin out of line. Hamlin, uh, you've got to give and take in this sport. He gave, he didn't take. Matt Yoakum is with Denny Hamlin. And Denny Hamlin talking things over right now with Darian Grubb. Emotions have settled, Denny. A lot of conversation a couple weeks ago after Phoenix on Twitter between yourself and Joey. Was this a carryover? What took place today? Um, no, it didn't have anything to do with that. Um, you know, really, I, you know, you've got to control your car, and he slid up into me, and really he would have been in the garage with no radiator in it had I not checked up uh, twice. So, you know, I just, um, you know, I meant to run into him. Didn't mean to, to spin him out, but... Uh, you know, his day was fine. Uh, he still had a bad day anyway for, for whatever reason. So, um, you know, it's just uh, we finished bad. He finished bad. It's, uh, you know, it's even. What did he say inside the car? Uh, I see he was coming for me. So I usually don't see him, so it's usually not a factor. All right, thanks, Denny. Chris? Wow, a shot. They, well, in California next Sunday, we'll see if Logano can catch up with Hamlin, who led the most laps but didn't win the guy who won second most laps. Casey Kane, Hendrick Motorsports, and Steve Burns is in victory lane. Casey Kane in victory lane. I know how badly you wanted to win that race last week. Does this make up for it? Absolutely. This is, uh, this is a big win. I I love racing for Hendrick Motorsports, Rick Hendrick, uh, the opportunity he gives us, and this whole team was flawless again today, last week, today, uh, this whole season so far, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. Great clips. I've been with them for a long time. We've, uh, we've won a few races together, and it's great to win a cup race with great clips. They're out cutting hair yesterday, or a couple days ago, and uh, it's been a good week in Farmers Insurance, Chevrolet, SS, uh, Pepsi Max, but everybody's done a great job, and just racing Brad, racing uh, Denny was tough, and, and uh, and Jeff and Matt Kinseth was really good there. I don't know what happened to those guys. It looked like Jeff might have had a tire problem, but uh, it was still it was a, it was a big win. I'm, I'm really happy. Casey, on the cool down lap, you said it was a big accomplishment. Why is that? Well, I just feel like for myself, it's a really big accomplishment to win here. This is a tough place. It's been a tough track for me at times. And uh, just for this whole team to step up and do it together. Uh, you know, we've prepared pretty hard this year, and uh, it feels good to win. We Trucker, our uh, truck driver, he, he lost his dad last night and uh, so this is this is for him and then I, I have a great friend in Washington JJ Arnett he lost his dad about three weeks ago uh, so it's a memory of him and uh, you know we, we had a lot of fun with Jerry Arnett he took care of us got us out of a lot of trouble so uh, I just want to thank all those guys and everybody that supports this team this engine was unbelievable again thank you Casey congratulations let's go to Chris Devota well, when you're so good at a racetrack and you don't end up in victory lane, it has to be frustrating. But when you come from the back after a penalty and race like that up to the front, how do you leave feeling? You need to stop getting penalties and just stay up front all day. But uh, it's just, I don't know. Uh, we're trying to take too much on pit roads, and it's not working for us. So we just need to back off. But I don't know. This guy's doing an awesome job with uh, these these cars. You know, the M&M's Camry was fast. And guys did a great job. Just um, wish there was more to have there. You know, just too tight all day. Just never really had the car that was worth uh, being able to run the bottom as long as it needed to. And then on the top, it was too tight on the top as well, too. So it's uh, it's a good day, I guess. Another impressive Four run for Kyle Busch at Bristol. There is Joey Logano moments ago who wound up 17th and Hamlin who roughed him up wound up 23rd. You heard from Denny Hamlin. Jeff Hammond is standing by with Joey Logano. Joey, you getting a chance to see what happened right there in the race between you and uh, Denny Hamlin. Uh, what did you say to him? That's for me to know and, uh, and Denny to know. So uh, frustrating. I had a really fast Shell Pento Ford um, that I felt like it was capable of winning the race. Uh, I'm very proud of the guys for giving me a, a car like that. And um, it's unfortunate getting frustrated, uh, you know, running a lot better than where we've been finishing. And then um, probably we fixed it pretty good. And then... Um, he got knocked in the back again and ripped the quarter panel loose. So, um, here I'm watching the replay here. I mean, he just, I mean, it's Bristol, but it's it's ridiculous. It's not, um, I feel like I race him clean all the time, and uh, he's going to do that. So, uh, I understand the way he races now that he's not my teammate, and I will race him the same way he races me. Chris, you can definitely tell there is still some bad blood between these guys, and it's getting, I think, hotter yet. Yeah, fair enough. It's, uh, it's not Twitter, it's Bristol. 
Meanwhile, Casey Kane, who grew up on a farm, his dad built a dirt track and a field. Casey took night classes so he could graduate from Enumclaw High School in the state of Washington. And we'll have more from Bristol, Tennessee in a moment. NASCAR and Fox at our live post-race show. Tevin, uh, uh, 10, I should say, of Casey Kane's 15 career wins have come from the front row. He started outside the pole when Kyle Busch, the pole sitter, wound up second. I told you I like those Bushes. Two of them in the top five. Good run for those guys. And Paul Menard just top tens it to death here at Bristol. Another good run for him. And Jimmy Murray crashed early, top ten. Greg Biffle wound up 11th. Kevin Harvick at 14th. You see low, uh, Joey Logano. Carl Edwards caught up in a little mishap a little earlier, 18th. And give a tip of the cap to David Strimmey with that Swan Racing Team. Good run for David. Top 20 finish. Rounding out Denny Hamlin at 23rd. Annika Patrick uh, 28th. And Hamlin, who, again, led the most laps and was up near the front, dropped all the way back after that incident. And the results, Tony Stewart, that early wreck on lap nine. So he's over his last 23 at Bristol. Our current points leader and the champ from last year, Brad Keselowski, is with Chris Devota. Well, I don't exactly know how to spell, uh, but that's what Brad Kozlowski did when he got out of his car so close. Yeah, I just, uh, again, wasn't meant to be this. I've ran eight races this year between Nationwide and Cup Car. I think we've had a shot winning every one of them. And at the end, it just can't get it to come all together. I don't know if that was my mistake or what, but um, I had to lead, obviously, on the restart. The five car was a little faster. Maybe it got me either way, but, uh, you know, the 11 car got in the back of me. I don't know if he got hit and pushed into me or just ran over me. I don't know one of the two, but... Cars won't restart with the tires off the ground, and uh, you know, obviously Casey got in front and drove away. But uh, dang, I'd like to have had a shot to hold him off there at the end, but it uh, wasn't meant to be. But uh, either way, another third or fourth place finish, and hell of a start to the year, and just want to get some W's. Thanks, Brad. Another top five for Brad Kozlowski this season. So after four of 36 races, 22 until the chase, he moves ahead of Jimmy Johnson. So Brad Kozlowski, your points leader, Johnson uh, hit the wall late in the race. Clint Boyer jumped up five spots. Yeah, rough race at Vegas for that whole team. And Clint said we got to focus and get our game together. Top five finish, fourth in points. Kyle Busch up to 10th in the points as he uh, continues to rebound from a tough start to the season. Martin Truex Jr., who was in the chase, along with Kevin Harvick, 17th and 18th in that top 10. Kyle Busch, he was running second, moved him up seven spots. And next weekend, it's on to Fontana, California. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. going over to say hi to his uh, Hendrick teammate and congratulate Casey Kane at age 32 and getting a victory in his Chevrolet. More NASCAR on Fox in a moment. Casey Kane gets to write his name in concrete. And there's our podium finish as Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. The podium finish you've heard from all three. And the Logano Hamlin incident. Now watch Michael Waltrip, that guy right there who just focuses on his job. Well, it seems like all heck is breaking loose around him. I'm going to work on this window, and y'all get that stuff settled. It'll, because my responsibility is to fix this window. He still doesn't turn away. And look, I don't know if he's listening to something where he just, it's like you see in the movies, but. All kinds of craziness is going on <laughs> around him. Uh, four races and two wins for uh, Hendrick Motorsports with uh, Casey Kane. He did finish yeah. the job, just like Casey Kane uh, finished the job. And uh, I like the comments between uh, Logano and Hamlin, candid. And uh, next week in California, it's a different kind of track. Uh, but will those two continue to look after each other? Well, just remember, you, you have choices. You can let somebody have a break or you choose not to. And in this case, Denny Hamlin said, you didn't drive me right, and I'm going to pay you back for it. That's short track racing. You're going to have that. When you make the choice to cut someone off, you put yourself in that position. You hope you get by with it, but sometimes you don't. That's but it. next week at Fontana, we're going to be going over 210 miles an hour down into the corners. You might think twice before hitting somebody. A different kind of deal. You talked about the Bush brothers at the beginning, Kyle and Kurt. Chris Devota is standing by with Kurt Bush. Another driver who loves this racetrack, the other Bush, Kurt Bush. And, man, what a run for you. I know a lot of people talking about the media you know, struggling with the team or a new team that wasn't the case today no we did have our struggles though we had some loose wheels and uh, off on some of the sequences but luckily enough we had a fast enough car and thanks to all of our guys for just digging in i mean i, I told everybody slap some high fives because we got areas that we can still polish up on but a top five at bristol and to be the fastest car on the track with less than 10 to go uh, when I caught Kyle and when I caught Keselowski, if it was for the lead, it would have been a lot different. But Kane was checked out. Congratulations to him. But I'm 
I'm really happy with our Furniture Row Chevrolet today. And Barney Visser and the guys, you know, we, we all can do a little bit better here and there, and I can do better. But uh, the 478 car is used up today. And uh, it's just good, though, that we got everything rolling this weekend like we needed it. Overcoming obstacles and making a statement today. Thank you, Krista. And boy, the, the leaders, Bristol was tough on the leaders. Kane and that restart with Brad Keselowski with 39 laps to go, but we saw Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth uh, that incident take them out earlier. A vibrating wheel affected uh, Denny Hamlin. Your thoughts on the Generation 6 car after going through all these different types of tracks and our first of six short track races? We thought it would be exciting, and it was. We had side-to-side. -side, heck, we had three wide racing. There were some problems with guys blowing tires, lots of cautions, lots of lead changes. I think it had everything we wanted. What I love most was Casey Kane's hunger. We saw him after Vegas thinking, i got to win, and he pulled it off today. He had the best car last Sunday, didn't win. He has the best car and does win today. Tonight on Fox, don't forget on the Cleveland Show, you're going to hear Casey Kane's voice with Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt Jr. as part of our animation nomination. You'll laugh out loud on Fox. We've already talked about Fontana. We checked the weather. Sunny and 80 degrees for the Auto Club 400, presented by Coca-Cola. Note that start time, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. For continuing race coverage here from Bristol, Tennessee, you can tune in to Victory Lane on speed. Some thoughts about California and the speed. I just love these Gen 6 cars and how well they stick to the corners. And at California, this is going to be the fastest they've been able to air these things out. I'm serious over 210 miles an hour down in the corner. Really wide racetrack. You can move around a lot. Be a lot of good racing. For Daryl, Larry, and Mike, our entire pit reporting crew, and Michael Waltrip, but our production crew, I'm Chris Myers, thanks for watching and being a part of NASCAR on Fox, where Casey Kane was victorious. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Sunday. I'm done if they fall.